Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night, and we are live. Yeah! Uh, and you got the time of day right as well. Wednesday night. Night, I did, yes. The first, did. I think that's the first time ever. First time ever. Congratulations. That's the only time I'll ever get it right. I'm going now, see ya. Yeah, that's it. We're done. We're done. Bye. No. Um, <laughs> as you can see, we've got a guest with us today. We've got Michael. Sam is not available, so we've uh, drafted someone in to replace him. Uh, Lou and Steve our regular hosts as well. Uh, Michael is... Michael. Michael or Mike? What's your, what that's do you so, prefer? So, so, it sounds so sexy the way you say it that you know, way. You know why <laughs> I said Michael? It's because that's what comes up on my Skype. It says Michael, not Mike. Like oh, you know what? He's, you can call me whatever you like. Lou, Lou's even put Michael on your uh, uh, on the on the stream I as have, well. Yeah. So. I my, my, uh, no, no, no. My, most people call me Michael. They just don't say it, say it so seductively when they, when they talk to me. Ooh, <laughs> Michael. Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> So yes, Michael is from a, uh, another uh, podcast, which is based down south. He's a Southern softy, and we've uh, uh, from. <laughs> I was Did on, you get I was, out of the way? Yeah, I was, I was on their stream uh, a few uh, weeks ago, and that felt very welcome. Had a good, very good time. We decided we'll do a bit of a swap, so we've got a bit of a uh, student exchange going on. And uh, so yeah, so you, uh, we'll we'll let you introduce yourself first, Michael. Tell us what who you are and what you're about. Michael, the stag beetle himself. I'm from uh, Game Over Year, at Gover Year, if you want to check. I'm sure there's links everywhere anyway. Um, yeah, we're, we're very similar. We get on stream and ramble. Ramble, ramble, ramble. I'm renowned as the uh, loudmouth one that doesn't know when to shut up, and generally the drunk one on the stream. So uh, <laughs> I didn't get the drunk part when I was watching. I know, no, because the thing is, I've been told I'm not allowed to drink when uh when certain guests are coming <laughs> on because there's, there's a lot of so, expensive equipment around no doubt well no it's all right but this time <laughs> we'll, we'll change up the game instead so oh, yeah, good lad fine. good lad no oh. I, I'm, I'm i've it's it's never too like i'm not a I'm, they they class <laughs> me as the closet alcoholic of the team but it's it's not like i'm falling over and stuff it's just uh but they it, it eases eases the tension a little but bit they've trusted you with uh with representing them Though, in the, uh, do you go on like, any other podcasts? Or we've um, we've done some stuff with other people. We had um, we we did like a, a crossover share with Eight Bit Bastard. They do um, quite a lot of the uh, what's it called, the Grand Theft Auto five right. videos and stuff. They 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 did quite well with one actually recently. But no, generally Leon's the man in charge. But I'm I'm, sent, I'm who you get today. He sent a minion. On his way out. I know you're the one I'm, who talks the most on the other stream, so that's exactly what we star. like here. I'm the, I'm the stag beetle. I'm you the are. Star, you're, the one, you're the one that, that attracted Elite. me to the show. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, just a quick uh, a quick warning. Uh, not every podcast does this, but we give you a little parental advisory before we start because we will say fuck and bugger quite a lot. Um, so if you're offended by swearing, shut the stream off. off or, sh or yeah, just stop the uh, <laughs> stop the YouTube stream or whatever you're doing. Um, we changed the format of the show up recently. We used to have a subject that we talked about, and we, we talked about that for two hours, but now we've just got a very basic, what have we played, and then we talk about gaming news, essentially. We do have a little list section as well, just for a bit of a bit of ribbing, I think. it's. Uh... Has anybody else got a list, by the way, this week? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I can try and think of one. I do have a list. Uh, again, I've, I've still got, I made a, a little list a few weeks ago. Um, and Mike, you are more than welcome to come up with something ad hoc. Favourite games, favourite protagonists in games. If we've already done it, tough. We won't be able to do Look that. But... Chris loading okay. that question. What? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying that that's that they're the kind of ideas that you, they had. In fact, I might have just read well, out well. one that I had. <laughs> I had by accident. <laughs> Um, but, oh, and that goes to the uh, out to the, the audience as well. If there is anybody watching, then please let us know if you fancy uh, us going through a list of anything and we'll just list the best things that we, we can come up with. It's not a list show. That's uh, the smallest part of it. So yes, um, first of all, we'll talk about um, what games we played this week. And we'll let you go first, Mike. Um, so yesterday I uh, actually saw Leon. He's one of the other guys on the show. He's the main host. Um, and he introduced me to Rogue Legacy oh. on PS4. Oh, and that's ruined my life. It is, it, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? It's so good. Like, like I, so we started at what time did I get around there? About three o'clock yesterday. I've clocked about seventeen hours since then. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, like I I don't know how I've done it because I got to the point where I was playing on his PS4 and we were leveling his character up and stuff, and I was like, uh, why am I doing this? I need to leave. I need to start my guy. So yeah, I've just been I'm playing that. To be honest, I was contemplating calling in sick just to <laughs> carry on playing it. I've, uh, um, I've ne- you've nearly caught me up. I've got th- I've only got thirteen hours on record for it, but I've uh, I've hammered it. I think I'm level one hundred and fifty odd, something like that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not. I I mucked around for quite a long time, and I didn't really understand the system fully. Like I spent a lot of time like doing stuff that now I look at it and I'm like, why why bother, sort of thing. But um, what do you yeah, mean? like, well, like I sort of I was leveling up individually. So like I get something and I buy it, and like I'd have three other items that were better already. So I'd be like slowly doing it rather than just you know having a good game and then going to the next character and the, the bits like that but yeah it's, it's got me hooked hot like have you I, have you moved out of the castle area yet into the other sections yeah i've done well it have depends you, how you how you class that because like I've, I've beat two bosses but i haven't done it in like in a solid run like i i saved and went in with a character and i was like yeah i can beat these two bosses easy and did that but i'm it's kind of like I'm averaging, you know, the best way I can put it is about 20 minutes of gameplay per per time I'm doing it. Because there's not really a how much you've achieved apart from, you know, how many minions you've killed and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, I'm getting addicted to, like, I've, I've just started using, like, the Lich and um, started getting quite good with that. Um, but, like, didn't understand a lot of the, the system when I was first playing. I was just like, yeah, let's do this. And then realised, like... Oh have, wow! You know, have either of you two played uh, Rogue Legacy? Have you I've seen, seen it? Loads, I've seen loads of it, and um, uh, it kind of annoys me a little bit that it's described as a roguelike, but it looks more like a kind of um, Metroidvania style it's, game. It's it's a Metroidvania roguelite. It's not fully on rogue oh, roguelike, but it's because you, you, when you die, you still retain some. Of, well, you retain your money. That's the point. Mm. until you go into the level again and then you lose all of your money so you can spend it all at the vendors and you can spend it all on skills before you go into the next bit but it's it's again for those who haven't played it it's a 2d kind of you're a knight and you're running around killing enemies it's all procedurally generated every single section is different and there's little challenges in it and there's bosses in it as well i haven't actually killed a single boss in that game I've played it, I'm on my level 150 and I haven't touched the bosses. Every time I've went into a boss area, I've shit my pants and ran off immediately. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not easy. No, um, I nearly not- got the knight one, you know, the guy who walks across the screen and uh, fires, mm-hmm. his, fires his lance or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I haven't got much further than that. It's, uh, it's, a, it's pretty brutal. Like, it's, it's one of those games that... It's, it's the, okay, this is my last go kind of game. Like... <laughs> about 40 times today i was like right <laughs> last go and then like it would be a good one i'd be like ah oh, but i've just bought like, let's go again yeah let's, yeah. let's just do one more that's how they and keep then, like three hours later i was like oh my god how, how have i wasted this much of my time have you unlocked the shinobi game? yeah that's the um the one that i'm starting to get quite good with as well the um whatever the version up from the shinobi is that has the H something, I can't remember what it is. I can't remember. I don't know if I've opened that one yet. I'm actually at a point now where I stopped playing it a while back and I, every time I play it again, I, I don't get enough money to spend on anything. So I'm now at yeah. a point where I'm like, should I just start it again or should I continue and get better at it, you know? That, that's the annoying part where, you know, you've, you've really got to... I mean, I like the way it does it, but you've really got to hit a certain level of coin to actually do anything now. Mm. And, um, you know, I can go in there and use a miner or so, someone that generates more coin, like I can make it that way, but I can't survive as long. So actually it's more of a case of I've just got to let, like, nail it on every time I play it. Um, but no, I, I, I love it. For, I mean, because it's PS4 at the moment, it's um, there, you know, the game of the month sort of thing, or one of them. Um, so it's completely free for anyone that's on PlayStation. All right. And I, I think it's one of those games that, you know, I'm classed as the console gamer out of the team, 
So everyone, they're they're more PC based. I play PC games, but more console based. Everyone looks down at me at this point. Like, yeah, you're you're the Sam. The you're the Sam of our team. So you you've, you're a good replacement for him for this show. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Although I we can actually that. see you, we can actually see see you because Sam's uh, Sam's internet's so terrible. We can't actually put his video on. <laughs> oh, is he the one? Is he the one that you were saying had like a three meg connection? Yeah. Okay. So like is this um, is, is this PlayStation only? I take it. No, 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 it's, no. it's on no, everything. No, no, no. It's on oh, Steam. Right, it's yeah. it's an awesome game. I got it in a humble bundle. It was actually I think in my first. You got it in a sale. Shut your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has never bought anything full price. Not not recently, and it, I've got good reasons for that because I. I, I I resent paying 50, 60 quid because for a game. Because you when hate I... the software industry, that's what it is. No, isn't it's it? nothing to do with that. I am the software industry, yeah, thank exactly. you very much. Hate <laughs> yourself. And you look in the mirror every day like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. That's just what the DLC thing. should I release today? Go on. What are you saying, Steve? I was saying that's just the beard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so what else have you been playing, Mike? Um, I gave Dragon Age Inquisition a good go. Like I was like, I think I can right, see what's I'm, coming here already. Yeah, well, I, I can't stand. I, just, I don't want to be lots of characters. I want to be one character. Oh, okay. That wasn't what I was I, expecting. It, well, <laughs> I, it was. It was all right. It's. It's not good and it's not bad. It's just like, you know, when I played Skyrim, I got lost in Skyrim and I like put so many hours into that kind of game. And I love, you know, that Fallout. All, all these kind of games where you know, it's like your RPG, but you know, a little, a little blanded down almost. Um, but I just don't like the fact that, you know, I've got five people in my team and I have to switch between them. But if I don't, they just all get killed all the time. You and don't I'm like completely, <laughs> completely agree with that. I, I hate games that make you control an yeah. entire team. It's such a pain in the ass. I, I disagree with all of you. I love it. I love that kind. Of, I love to the micromanagement of uh, Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Two wasn't as good, but I still enjoyed it. It got really slated, but I I did enjoy it. Haven't played Inquisition yet, but it's on my it's on my to do list. It's it's right. It gets you sucked in quite quickly. Like the stuff at the beginning, it it, it kind of puts this whole this is going to happen and then you think this is you know this is where it's going and then it's a little different and it's, it's good and I, I can see how like there is evidently a lot of gameplay in that game like from what people have told me and literally me spending however many hours and I'm like I haven't even scratched the surface at this point but I just like I want to I want to make my one person the badass I don't want to <laughs> fuck about with everyone else I want to be you know the paladin that kicks everyone's ass or i want to be the one mage or whatever i don't want to have to faff with that one over there or have to dilly out potions every time someone's dying you know what i do you know what i do in those games if there's a team of three that you have i'll play with three people mainly and then i'll okay because you know at some point inevitably the best person that you've set up is going to get pulled out of the game and you're not going to be able to play them for four hours or yeah. whatever you know like final, in fantasy final, final fantasy 7 cloud gets <laughs> taken out you know uh, but they do that in every single one of those type of games and it is a bit annoying but at the same time it adds an extra challenge to it i think i, I like that uh, when so you i was so ready and i so wanted to like uh, dragon age origins but I can't get away with that um, that multiple character micromanagement system in in like a live action game in something like XCOM where it's turn based, yeah. no problem. But I don't like it when you've got a you know you you've, you've got an, an aim in mind or a goal to achieve, and then you've got to think, all right, I can't go with that character. I've got to switch this character, but he he needs this sword or that shield. Or, it's just no. It's like you're playing a kind fun. of modern version of um, the Lost Vikings, except not as fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think Origins was, was awesome Running around with a shield though. on your head Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, was a, there was a game on the was SNES called um, King Arthur's World that was similar to that But you controlled like multiple units And you you basically moved them into position Like you'd have archers that would shoot things over And that, I quite I quite enjoyed that kind of game as well So maybe I, maybe that's my thing Maybe that's what, what I like in RPGs So in, in, in Dragon Age Origin do the other characters, When you're playing do the characters Do they kind of go into an AI mode and just start Kind of standing yeah. around, yeah, they start following you, but they get lost quite easily all sorry. the time. Like, <laughs> shit. I didn't, I didn't get that into, with Origins. So I don't know what Inquisition's like, but well, I started it on normal mode, and it was like uh, straight off the bat, you're getting maybe four or five people, and my guy was the tank. So I was like, okay, all I have to do is just get in there and get stuck in, and they're not going to die all the time. 
And all they're doing is literally like the mage is standing next to like this big <laughs> boss, like shooting him from this far away. I'm like, what are you doing? No, no, right. That is your fault because there's a, no, there's an entire system set up. <laughs> it, well, again, in Origins, I don't know if they've kept it in Inquisition or it's been simplified or not, but in Origins, you could set it so different people would stay at different distances from the the that's what i did antagonist. Like I, and also i had to put it down to like potions they automatically use potions at a certain percentage or whatever it's set as standard to 50 percent what kind of idiot uses their potion at 50 percent health that's just just mad it depends on the type of character again if you've got mages you'd want it at 50 percent health but if you've got warriors who are at the front you don't know how to play rpgs blatantly nah. you blatantly rubbish at them <laughs> mate Nah, you, you got to do it ten percent. You got to live on the edge. That's the uh, only way to play these games. That's why you don't like them, because you and that's why your characters keep dying because you, you think you're harder than you are. That's a problem. Yeah, probably. To be honest, <laughs> I, I mean, I I I was just hoping that, like, I was really hoping that I could forego that system by me doing enough that the AI can just carry it on and I could mm. just sort of do what I'm doing with one. But you can't, realistically. Well, in my experience of those games, uh, those type of games again, most of the time the characters do level up, the AI still levels up with you. Yeah, they do. Like, no, don't get me wrong, they're not they're not completely stupid. Like I'm making them out to be like the worst AI ever. But <laughs> it's it's just frustrating that, you know, you're my my champion or whatever is trying to like he's got the ability to do something. So I'm focusing on right, I'm gonna do that. All I need you to do is heal. All I need you to do is shoot. And all I need you to do is run about and do some stuff. And they just don't really have, they don't really have like the tactics down. I just need to like, have a little team talk with them and go like, guys, these are your jobs. Like, right. There's an, there's an advanced configuration that you can, you can go into. And, I, and again, I think they've got... Who's got time for that? Shut up then. Shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on at all. Would, don't would bash the game a game. Back? Would the game work better if it was co-op then? If, if other people could play? hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. But that, so that really I, is less letting the game down. It's the fact that you have it's to not. Look, all... look, I'm not saying it's a bad game in the slightest. I'm just saying that I don't really enjoy that whole aspect of having lots of other parts. Like, I'd rather have, you know, maybe four or five characters and me have to do certain parts with one, and then me really controlling another part, and you know, always focusing on one of them because I just feel like. I'm letting one of them down because I'm not, you know, I jump over to someone and try and move them into a better position. And then my guy who I had like doing whatever I wanted to does something I don't want him to do. It's a bit nitpicky, but I just, I didn't, I didn't find it that much fun. Like, uh, mm. that's the end of it. Like, uh, like it wasn't a bad game in the slightest. Like I'm probably going to spend some more time playing it. I just didn't find it fun. I just found it more like, Oh, God, he's done that again, or this, that, and the other. That I, I heard criticism of the game, and this is what I thought you were going to say, uh, that it, I think it's something like the first 19 hours of the game is really slow and really shit, and then it get, then it opens up and becomes really good after that. It's, oh. um, I'm just breaking through that point. Right. Uh, like, I'm, I'm into the part where I'm getting into the sort of stuff that, you know the nitty gritty but i just like that system is the thing that puts me off like every time i go to play it i go well actually i might do like this is how bad it is the other day i was like right i've got five hours i'm gonna play that oh wait i'll play a bit of pinball fx first <laughs> <laughs> five hours playing pinball before i got around to dragon age and i was like oh no i haven't got time for this <laughs> uh, it just it, it, it just doesn't click my buttons unfortunately like I'd much rather be in like a Diablo style scenario of like my guy my loot everything's me rather than multi you know I'm, I'm on RPG I'm, I want turn based I'm on like, entirely the other side of the fence I, I cannot stand the, the Diablo type mechanic of just running around hacking and slashing people collecting items and just getting better items constantly the, the fact that Dragon Age has got this it's got that mechanic in it to an extent. I mean, it's not procedural, I don't think. Procedural. No. I think it's all set based, set pieces. But I like the fact that there's more to it than just that, you know, following a linear path with a linear story. And It does something very, very well, which is quite annoying, though. Like, it takes you, like, your mini map will come up with the quests and, like, your area you go to and all this stuff. And you go, oh, but well, I've got to get there. But it would make sense if I do this, 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 and this on the way there. And then you get sucked into, oh my God, how have I spent 
half an hour killing lambs like for no reason I'm like I'm way past that kind of stage this is for the, the entry level stuff and I'm still running around trying to like find some you know basic task stuff but so no it's, it's, managed to make fetch quests fun I wouldn't say they made it fun. <laughs> there's nothing fun about a fetch quest. I agree. No, there. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of that to start with as well. And also, there's a lot. There's some weird mechanics that I, I, I didn't really realise until it started happening. So I was trying to take on something. I got a bit bored. I was like, right, these guys are way higher level than me. I'm gonna kite them, and I'm just gonna, you know, shoot them with arrows until I can finally get them. And I took them back to like the town. And then I got all my health back, and I was like, oh, what? When you walk into town, you get everything back? Okay. And then just walked out, <laughs> ran back in. And then I was like, this is, it's, it's not broken, but it was just... It's not broken, but you took advantage of it anyway. While you were doing it. <laughs> I think, I, to be fair, it did take me about 20 minutes to get them from where they were to back to the town. But, you know, it was... Uh, it's one of those games I think I'm going to... Like, it's just... I was expecting it to be a little Skyrim style thing or whatever because I'd not really played the Dragon Age series before so I didn't really know what I was getting into and I really wanted to just fall into like a you know my character and I can be whoever I want to be and you know spend 50, 60, 70 hours of doing whatever happens and like I'm just finding it a bit tedious on like the sort of upkeep of everyone else I don't really have an interest in them the, the characters don't really interest me um, my character. The only reason I have my character is because I had horns like a stag beetle. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'll have that character. And then like, it's just I haven't fallen in love with the storyline. I also found the graphics were horrific in some parts. That's because you're on but, PlayStation. No, I'm on Xbox. Oh, same well, thing. you're on a console. Uh, same thing compared to the console. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't like a sense of. Um, it was like the cutscene stuff as well. Like there was parts that were just like. It just looked lazy in some parts. Like, they must have this much, you know, they had this much to do. And it just seems a little lazy in parts. Like, you know, I would have tweaked this and I would have done that. But that's just... I, I suppose it's because it's my first time into that world. Like, I'm going to automatically make, you know, a world. They could have done it like this. And they, they could have done like that. And I'm sure there's thousands of people out there that found Dragon Age first. And they're like... Whoa that shit I, why would I want it like that and stuff it's just the the comparisons I have to make I guess fair enough each their own said I, I I'm quite looking forward to playing it when I do get time but it's not if a you priority the, if, if you like that system 100% you'll love it because there's a lot of stuff to do and there there is a heavy load like I, I can see that being 100 150 200 hour plus game if you just go off and do everything and you know explore the world as it is just just it's it's not won me like it had a certain you know you've got that interest meter and the longer i play and the less i get interested in it it's like i i can see it doing like a, a destiny now like i have no interest in going back to destiny whatsoever or i've got all the expansions i've got the the super limited edition set i've got everything paid for forever i just have no fucking you know i don't care about it anymore there's, there's guys at work that are, that are about three or four of them that are still talking and playing and raiding and loving Destiny and I haven't played it and I, I couldn't really say if I'd like I don't think I would I think it'd be the grinding would probably drive me up the wall gotta be honest with you I think the the thing with Destiny was for, for me it was the first um, next gen console like everyone I worked with got a PS4 for that game hmm. and we played every night five hours and it was more just having the banter on like it could have been any game but we were just all getting into it and um like it had something but like they, they didn't there's no storyline to that game whatsoever and like that's that's the one thing you, you're after and there's so many like you know i'm talking about glitches and stuff where you can kind of hack and cheat or whatever someone's this week done whatever the raid is on hard on his own like there's something wrong with your game if you can do that. You, <laughs> you know, in one man raid. Well, there's there's too many parts where you can, and I've done it, and Leon does it on stream a lot of the time. He'll do like the nightfall, which is a three man mission, like on the hardest mode. And there's just certain spots you can get into and hide behind, and the AI just doesn't know what to do, and it walks <laughs> off, and then you fuck them in the back, and you run back, and 
there's too many things like that, and th that's what broke that game for me. Like, uh, there was too much. You know, I went to PvP and I was like, this is quite fun, but there's a there's a lag on the PvP. Uh. Like, it's it's a it's it's not even a lag. It's like a, a, a so you can kill them, and on their screen they're dead, but to me they're still firing at me. Like, they it's it's right. it's like a weird lag system. It, that's it, a it, network it's, um, it's, programming issue. That. Yeah, it's it's and it's weird. So like you. I know full well he's dead. I've just hit him with a rocket launcher, but then I got headshot back. Like, and it's it, it's not a, it's not designed to be multiplayer, but every part of it just sort of crumbled around. And it could have been something really special because the the actual worlds that they created. If you spend a little time just going around looking at everything, it's well, really really beautiful. I'm gonna say it looks beautiful. I, I give it that, and I like the premise of it. But I know that. To me, when I play a game these days, I want to spend my time. You know, I want to spend quality time playing games, and I don't. I don't see a grinding game as a quality time. Like this is why I don't play MMOs anymore. This is why I'd want to. You know, I'd rather play. I'd rather play something like Dragon Age, where it's given me quite a lot of different options and lots of different yeah. things to do. Even if it is micromanagement, I, I like that. I like that aspect. I see it's uh, done the typical well. The now typical Bioware thing of shot and loads of sex scenes in there as well. Is that the? Is that That's what all of them? all of them have. That the the whole point of playing Dragon Age Origins was to to shag Morrigan, the sexy witch. Standard. The only reason Giant to play that sexy game. Witch. Yeah, who turns into a dragon <laughs> at some point? Giant sexy witch. Yeah. Sorry um, to anybody who doesn't know <laughs> who wasn't on the uh, thing before the the podcast. We were talking about giant sexy witch porn. Yeah. Uh, we'll leave that with you. So um, <laughs> I just want to quickly say before we move on to the next game. Um, th uh, welcome to everyone who's just joined the channel. If you, if any of you have a, an idea for a list that you'd like us to go through later on, so we're talking about things like your favourite game, your favourite enemies in game your f any you know your favorite weapons with giant sexy witch we have done quite a lot or oh, your favorite Only giant one. sexy witch that turns into a dragon um <laughs> there's actually two of those actually no she's not giant and sexy that uh, morrigan's mum is a old hag but she turns into a dragon as well um yes yeah, so if any of any of you have got any ideas for a list then please bring them forth and tell us and we'll uh, we, we may pick one out of the hat and and do that later on uh, so mike have you played anything else then this week, I put I put something else on the document. I can't, for the life of me, remember it, what I put. It Battle says Battlefield Hardline. Hardline. Oh yeah, I played the beta for Battlefield Hardline. That doesn't. That sounds <laughs> ominous. <laughs> that was shit. Yeah. Really? It, it, uh, right. First of all, it, EA. Okay, so I play a lot of EA games, and um, their servers need to be raped and killed, <laughs> and just uh, it, 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 I've had enough of it because. I, like I was saying to you guys, I've got three very decent broadband connections in this house. Like two of my two of the family members that I'm staying with at the moment work for VT, so they have their own separate hard lines in. Mm. And EA, like I was playing the the beta, and I was literally lag issues, cutting out, everything's going wrong. And I was like, all right, we'll try another broadband. Nope, another broadband. Nope, and it's just their servers, just all the time. Um, it was okay, if you like. Battlefield, you'll probably like it, but you know the 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 level that. So there's a couple of modes, but one of them is effectively cops and robbers. Mm. And so yes. I I I loaded in with a couple of my friends, and they were like, "Okay, cool. You got to get a vehicle, and you got to just keep driving it around." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's like, "No, you got to keep control of it. It gets you points." I'm like, uh, "Okay." King and I'm just driving around. Paper. It's sort. Of, it's not. It was just literally the the. You had to have a certain momentum and speed to be gaining points and stuff, and then pretty much just everyone's got an RPG and they blow me up. And I was like, this is no fun. I think so we tried the like. Le Le Leon's made a good point. If that is Leon, who's uh, who's on the G Gale Gale over yeah, game of yeah, <laughs> Twitch uh, Twitch name. Um, he said it's in beta. Give it a break, basically. It, it's in beta, but you still got to pay for it. What? No, I no, it was no. open beta, right? No, it was a free, it was a, it was an open beta, but there. Okay, yeah, it was in beta. That game mode will be exactly the same game mode when it, it comes be. to the main thing. It will like be. the issues, yeah, fair enough. Uh, like I, I can give him a break because there's loads. I, apparently, it had more people playing it than Destiny, which I was shocked by uh, because so I. Someone else has just said uh, it should have been DLC for Battlefield 4. Mm. 
In in any yeah. other time of gaming, it would have been it would have been a mod for free. Yeah. Um, God, I remember the mods we used to get for, for like, the mods for the games that we C- Command and Conquer used to have loads of mods that were yep. amazing. We are Quake. All the Quake games had mods that were free. Unreal. Actually, the mods as well. Unreal. 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 All of them. All of them we used to play. And these days, it's just. Just, to be fair, the, qual- the the quality of those mods wasn't brilliant. They were fun, but obviously the amount of work that's gone into Hardline is obviously a lot. But then again... Yeah, but it, it sounds like the for... quality is still not there. Well, the it's... gameplay, I mean, the, the concept doesn't seem, seem to be... It was fair. okay. I mean, I'm not a huge um, Battlefield fan anyway. Like, I liked it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind first-person shooters. I'm not one that's heavily on it. You know, most people think of a console gamer and they go, "Oh my god, he must love that shit." And I'm like, "No, it's it's all right. It's a bit fun sometimes." Got, got to be honest, we we think exactly the opposite. If you're a console gamer, you don't like first person games. Mm-hmm. I, well, that's, I'd, that's what comes well, to mind. I'd, I'd say I'd say more. Well, probably the biggest titles on console that sell are first person shooters. Yeah, but, Call of Duty, Battlefield. Call, yeah, mm. but they're not. They're Apart not from sports games. Yeah, and a lot of sports games. <laughs> Hand first up here. person sports That's game. That's me. <laughs> first person but football game. First person football game would be the worst Shit. game ever. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be utterly terrible. I Why didn't you just go and play football? Connect, and it didn't work. <laughs> so loads of people putting their foot through the flat screens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's no, it that? Was, it was just. Uh, it was. It just. You know, it was one of those things. Like we played. There was four of us that played. And they were all having loads of fun, and I was like, "This doesn't feel any different at all. It doesn't, you know. I don't know why I'm getting excited. This is like a, it's like you're saying, it's almost like an expansion, but like a, a half-hearted one sort of thing. The the graphics seemed okay. The, you know, the gameplay seemed like Battlefield Four from everything I played, and then like the other parts, like the the different modes. There was one where you had to break into a set, like the safe one, and defending the safe and stuff like that I was like this is quite fun hmm. and then literally two seconds later it was just like oh well okay I, hold on we had that we had that pinned down and suddenly we're on to something different and it just oh does it, it switch in the middle of the game yeah it was like um no like there's, there's different modes there's different different modes but they were like how can I describe did it? you they, ever play Killzone uh, multiplayer uh, Killzone two or three specifically, no, because they had uh, they had this really u- what well, it was unique to me anyway. Um, I played it on PS three, I think they were on, and uh, they had a really unique way that they they'd have a capture the flag and then they'd have a, a, a king of the hill and then they'd have a mm-hmm. death match, but it'll all be in one big game and it just switched in the middle of it. And it was I yeah. really liked that. I thought that was a really cool mechanic that they implemented, and it was no, seamless been- as well. That would have been really fun. Like, I mean, the main problem was everyone that I was playing with, like, everyone wanted to upgrade their guns. So the quickest way to upgrade, um, and apparently it's a big deal because I've never really played Battlefield 4, if you upgraded on the bad guy's side, you wouldn't have that upgrade for the good guys. <sighs> that is just, which, that is just yeah, that's, taking that's a how, piss, that, isn't that's it? How, that's how it always works in Battlefield from 3 onwards. I think it might have even been 2, but you... You, certain weapons are only available to certain sides, so yeah. you like, level up the AK-47, but you wouldn't be able to use that on the like the, yeah. the US side and things. I, I really enjoyed BF3. Um, I didn't ever buy anything. I think I got premium like really late on or whatever. Is it Battlefield Premium? Is that what it's called? Uh, I had the same. Limited it was. Yeah, well, whatever. Anyway, it was. I got that really late because again, I got it quite cheap somewhere. It wasn't a sale, but it was some. It was cheap somewhere, and uh, I thought, why not? I'll go for it. And uh, I. I I stopped playing I it shortly really after. I really enjoyed it, but it was a very hard game. It's like very unforgiving. Basically, you had great. to play it. You had to play it for weeks before you played a good game. You know, <laughs> before yeah, you could I, actually I play with someone. I would have liked to have been able to play that game properly on a LAN. To be honest, I think that would have been great fun to play did with you a lot not, of your mates. Did you? Oh, because we had to go online, it's didn't we? Online yeah, only. Yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe we'll be able to do that now because there'll be no one on the servers. <laughs> there's still plenty of people playing it yeah yeah I imagine it's it's still I mean I never played 4 either and I don't think I'll bother oh. with Hardline I've got, I'll be honest with you I've given up with first person shooters unless it's like a, a a very special kind of first person shooter like maybe I think um, that Dial- Dying Light appeals to me uh, that new zombie game with parkour and upgrading your agility skills and things like that I yeah. quite like the sound of that but yeah I'm, I think I've given up with them I think, I think a lot of people are 
at that stage, to be honest. It's, it's the same old thing. Like, I really loved Titanfall when it came out for yeah. a, a long period of time because it really sucked. Like, I was just like, this is different. And I played it for a while, and then I got this same thing that you get with every FPS. It's just like, oh my god, this is the same old crap. There's a sniper shooting me, and this, 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 you know, all the same things that happen in every game. And they need to make, you know, a, a first person shooter without sniper rifles would be like. My number one first person shooter. See, we've talked about, play quick. We've <laughs> talked about this before. We've talked about um, sniper rifles in games and camping and uh, the issues that are uh, uh, in FPS games. I don't see any of them as an issue. I see any of them as a tactic. Oh, uh, if you want to be a sniper, it's and you're you the want... bastard sat on a hill. I, three I'm not. I am not. Defense. You know for a fact that I'm not that. I don't <laughs> snipe. I'm not into sniping personally, but I don't complain when someone. Headshots me from a million miles away. Oh, you're too busy camping. <laughs> Fuck off. You, you, would too, you, would, you would start to really get pissed off if you played like Battlefield 3, for instance. There were certain maps where you knew there would be three people on top of a mountain all to snipe, yeah. and, and someone would go yeah. up there and satchel charge them or land a helicopter Stop on them. them and they just go back up there the same place and do it again. It's like, you know, guys, come on. But they're getting kills and they're building. You yeah. know what they need to do? They need to take out the progression part of it take it back to brass tacks, but the only reason that the progression is still a thing and it's become a trope in games and people accept it is because they're making money from it. They make money mm. from it for the fact that people get addicted to the progression side of things and mm. people can buy things to progress further quickly, more quickly. Of course, yeah. yeah. That's the issue. Um, they need to take that out, but the thing is you'll never get that with the big the big companies anymore. Are you listening here? Yeah. Are you listening? Eh? Fucking eh? Ubisoft. I'm sure you're here watching at the moment. They yeah. are watching, yeah. I can see them, look. Uh, I'm, 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 EA I'm official in our by EA. Oh yeah? No. Um, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was just about to kick you out of the Skype call there. The, the, the amount of money I've spent on EA stuff for like Madden and whatever, I still, like I've, I've had enough now. Like yeah. I looked at it the other day, and uh, it's exactly the same thing as what you're saying. Like the progression side of things, you you could get sucked into that world like really easily, and then you know actually, yeah, all right. In one sense, at one point, I was, you know, had one of, the, you know, the top tier teams in Madden in the world, sort of thing. Like, if you looked at what level I had and so on, but I wasn't good enough to have that team. So, like, it was more I used the auction house and bought cards and bought, you know, coins and all this stuff and built this solid team. And then, like, three weeks later, another set of stuff, like Christmas, I should have my team, right? So, we've never really spoken about it on my podcast but someone made a joke about how much money have you spent on it and i was like it's a god awful amount like it's you know we're talking past the point of the top tier pc on that game um and it, I, I, we were talking about this last show we were talking about casual games and people how much money yeah. people will spend on them me and lou um and steve uh, steve commented on this me and lou said um that we uh, we'd paid a little bit of money. I was paying, playing Kingdoms of Camelot and Lou was playing Battle Pirates, ba Battle Pirates on Facebook or something. I think Lou spent a bit more money than I did, but I think he spent about 300 quid or something like that. 300 quid, I, I worked yeah. it out. I yeah. spent about 70 or 140, one of the two, I can't remember. But I spent more than I would on any other game because I got a bit drawn into it and I was like, yeah. I enjoyed the social aspect. But there were people in that game that I was playing that were spending a £1,000 a week on on gems they were because they were yeah. only to get to the top of the leaderboards when you when you step back and take a look at it right a thousand pounds a week even if your argument is i'm enjoying it and i'm socializing and i'm making friends and all the other stuff it's still ridiculous isn't you're it you're gonna blow a thousand pound a week on a game like kings of a like you may as well become a heroin addict <laughs> You'll probably have more. It's fun. probably cheaper. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's probably, <laughs> Less dangerous. And, and more pure as well, <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's rather more ish. But. Right. So, uh, sorry, let's get let's let someone else have a go because you've been wittering on for 40 minutes now about your, your games. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry, John. laughs> um, so, Lou, what have you been on with this week? What have you played? Well, I'll, I'll be very quick because if you actually look at my Steam stats, you'll see that I've very, very, very barely played these games. But I bought um, Son of Sea and Besiege last week. Um, kind of mentioned it to Steam and Steam managed to play them before I'd even played them myself. Sun the Sea is kind of a a roguelike top down um adventure game, exploration game I'd probably call it, um with a bit of management thrown in. Um very kind of story based or mission based. 
And not bad. Um, it kind of wasn't what I was expecting. The control system was a little weird. Yeah. Um, Tank controls or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you basically, you've got, you, you can use um, W and S to change between two different forwards and backwards speeds and then uh, and D to turn your ship around. Um, I was expecting to be kind of clicking around the screen. But yes, yeah, it's, it's not it's not so bad. Um, I played about 40 minutes of it and yeah, yeah. I think I was sold more on the way it looked. I was going to say, yeah, you're, yeah, you're quite often um, attracted to looks of games, though, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Moon Man. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I played a little bit of that. I also played a little bit of Besiege. Um, it, it does remind me very much of, of kind of the casual games you play on mobile or tablet. Like, it's kind of a um, like a, an Angry Birds style game, but with a bit of Kerbal Space Program thrown in there how much of a bit because i've i've just added it to my wish list and i'm i'm close to buying it but i don't want to get it if it's not too complex you know i'd rather it's, it was a bit more uh, what do you mean intricate. you'd rather it wasn't it is no, it can be it was quite a, intricate yeah i mean it doesn't it's not like it's not very the first mission is quite easy but after that they actually get quite hard quite quickly yeah it some of the tasks just, you've got to fulfill you've really got to think outside the box is it, do, as, yeah. is it as fun as bridget uh it's not as accessible as bridget um, okay, well that that's good because that's the kind of game that it I, is it's a not proper just... engineering game, isn't it? I, I think it, I think I can see why it appeals to Steve so much because you do really have to think about the I engineering think about the forces things. you put yeah. in, on the different elements that you're building. Like like you can't just build a massive tower and put four wheels in the bottom so it'll just collapse. Yeah, so we'll or the... you'll drive into a tree and it'll break and the wheels will come off or something. Or you'll steer and you'll realise that the steering goes all the way around, so you're steering backwards <laughs> <laughs> or crapping around like this. It's um, it is a very interesting game. So and yeah, I can't wait to show you guys some of the things I've made on it at the line. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might have to try and get hold of it before, but I don't think I'm going to have time before Friday. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, this weekend we're actually that, that's a good segue into it. This weekend we're um, we're we're having a LAN party, and we may stream some of it. We may even do some charity stuff. I think we're talking about, but we'll see. We'll see how we come up. We haven't really talked about it that much. Yeah. Um, we yeah. will have something, mm. maybe. So, Steve, you got anything on your list? Um, it's been a bit of a slow week for me. I've only actually managed to play about a couple of hours of uh, Majora's Mask 3D for the 3DS, the remake. Did you play uh, any last week? Did you? I can't remember. Uh, no, did. I, it didn't come out until Friday. Ah, right. Okay. So, I've uh, just got that. Having never actually played the original, uh, it's difficult to do a comparison. Oh, I have read a few comparisons online. Obviously, they've up the polygon count and added a few nice filters to it, changed the texture, resolution. Yeah. Um, from a control point of view, it's controlling the camera angle isn't the easiest. Um, and if you get the new 3DS, as in like the new, new, new one, um, <laughs> it's, it's got an extra button called the C-Stick, which apparently gives you much better camera control. But at the minute, you just have to kind of use your target and trigger to switch the camera whichever way you're facing. Right, so you hold the trigger and then move the... Stick or no, something. no, there's, it's, it's in you change the way your character's face and then press the target and trigger and the camera will move behind them. A lot of Zelda games do that though, a lot, even now. Yeah, but if you look at um, A Link Between Worlds, the camera uh, functionality on that was a lot better. It was, uh, it was a lot more intuitive. What's A Link Between Worlds? It's the first Zelda that was released on the 3DS. Oh, right, I haven't played that, so. Yeah. Which um, 3DS do you use? I've got the 3DS XL. Because they, what's the new one? That's Colour. the new 3DS XL <laughs> Alpha Wizard <laughs> yeah. Turbo yeah. Edition, which is basically the same apart from you can put clip-on covers on it. It's got this C stick, and it's got a bit of extra uh, processing power, which only gets utilised in certain scenarios. But isn't there an, another one in another country? In like in America, there's not just an XL. There's an another one as well. There's a double uh, XL. Yeah. Triple XL. <laughs> Five ninety nine. XL with a burger holder on the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, you 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 only played a little bit of that, have you? you know, uh, been... Well, for anyone who knows the game, I've just got the bit where you get the ocarina of time back. All right. So I have played a little bit of it. I think I got a few masks into it, and then I got a. Well, I didn't get bored. I think I borrowed it off a friend, and they took it back, and I never bought it. I should should really have a go at some point. Get get hold of it. Uh, but um, it's good. It's a little bit different as standard Zelda games. Again, having never played it before, it's 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 time based. Hmm. So uh, when you start the game, you've got three days in order to get this back. Obviously, when you get the Ocarina of Time, you can rewind time. 
but I'm assuming it's all based around these three days and you've got to try and do everything and then keep rewinding when you get to the end of it. Right. I'll, I'll figure out more as I proceed. Yeah, I said I didn't play it enough to, to know all that, but <laughs> that's interesting. I don't think uh, I've downloaded anything else recently. No. No. I, I too have had a very slow week this week uh, with games uh, as you know I usually get at least one day a week to, to hammer some up but I've had quite a lot of stuff going on and I think it's going to be the same unless we get to play different games this weekend um, the only game that I, the only game game that I've played is an indie game called Battle Block Theatre that you may or may not have heard of I think it's on consoles now as well I think it's been recently released it's a um, 2D platformer uh, you're this you're this little dude that runs around obviously on platforms and it's it's quite pretty and it's got an awesome voiceover it's got awesome voice work on it that so far i mean there's there's things like there's little teleporters that take you into different puzzles the secret um the secret walls for example uh, the enemies are pretty easy to get around and stuff i've done well, quite a few levels there. yeah there's a lot of cats in there and there's a, it said the soundtrack's brilliant i actually the, the voiceover is my favorite part of it is just just comical he sounds a bit like um I can't picture him now. Okay, there's a there's another character that's out there that just sounds a bit like. But anyway, <laughs> you've really got a hard on for sideways scrolling platforms at the minute. At you? the moment, I do. Yeah, it's, it's just because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play more of the games that I've already bought and I've already downloaded. Um, I think I didn't buy this one in a sale. You know, I think I specifically went out and bought this one separately because I wanted to play it because someone recommended it, and it is good. It's very very good for a platformer. And I'd, I would recommend it to anyone who likes platformers. It's it's an interesting concept. Um, one of the main things you have to do is uh, like save your save your friends, but you save them by collecting gems in all the levels and then unlocking them. But when you've unlocked them, you can then play as them, but they give you no extra abilities or anything like that. It's just a different sprite, a different image. Yeah. So I far, anyway. My my exposure to this game was um, on the recent um, Awesome Games Done Quick. Hmm. They did a co-op speed run of the game, and it was a really good speed run. I mean, I watched about an hour of it, and I normally don't watch speed runs of games that I've not played because it's uh, it's just too weird. It's like mm. you, you don't know what's yeah. going on. But it was really it was really entertaining, yeah. actually. Um, I've just been looking at some of the uh, the artwork for the game, and I've not I've got no idea what's going on there, but. I'll put it in the chat. The, I think the premise is you get, you get captured by these cats and then... The, no, but this is like a woman with four legs <laughs> projecting a spider web out of her ass. All right. With a catapult on top. I, um, I can't look at it, unfortunately, because I'm uh, it'll bugger the stream up. Um, but yeah, yeah, the premise is you're, like, you're, you're, you're captured by cats, imprisoned, and then you get released, and then you have to go and rescue all your friends, but the cats are... Essentially, every level is a theatre, and you're entertaining people. You're entertaining all the cats, and um, I think that's the story anyway around it. But I, there's probably more to it than that. I'm, I was enjoying the game more than anything. Lots of cool little mechanics, like you can pull a little boat around. Um, sometimes there's a there's a bit of water, and you die if you go in the water, obviously. Um, and yeah, you, you pick up a boat and put it in the water, and you can move that left and right and use it to get on different platforms and get up. To, it doesn't sound that interesting the way I'm describing it, but I. I'm quite enjoying it, and I will keep playing it. Um, the only other game that I've played is, whilst having a shit, um, I've been playing Angry Birds on my tablet. <laughs> That's it. That's basically the... the I'm not even going to go into explaining what Angry Birds is, because I'm sure by now everybody knows what it is. But Never I heard of it. No, I started it again, because um, I, I got... I think I, I don't know, got, got quite far Which into version? it. Just the original. The original Angry Birds. Um but yeah, I just I got a free version. <laughs> made the mistake of trying to drown though the uh, Transformers version. There's a Transformers version? Shit. Yeah, it's not Angry Birds in no. the slightest. It's like side-scrolling Angry Birds touch stuff. Yes. I like the idea. Some of the stuff was quite funny. Like you had like Starscream as like a pig sort of character and like things like that. But it was it's just not. It's not the typical Angry Birds, you know. There's no mechanics to that. It's it's more um, a timing based. You shoot the blocks, but you got to do it as you're running across the screen, sort of thing. And it didn't right. appeal to me in the slightest. Is it was it like a, an infinite side scroller or? It's not infinite. It's uh, there's the definitive levels, the same as like you know any of the Angry Birds. But it's like you come off. Astro Train or whatever it was, and 
you'd be Bumblebee, for example, and you had to shoot some stuff and then you'd turn into the thing. And it was just like, this is not Angry Birds in the slightest. Like, this isn't what I'm signing up for. This is just like a, you know, you've taken the biggest name of that and one of the biggest names of this, put them together and... Well, that's yeah, what they're doing now, though, aren't they? Rovio are just taking franchises yeah. and tagging. I, I know that there was a Star Wars one released a while back. I didn't play that was it. Quite the though. Star Wars one's all right, though. It's an actual act, uh, Angry Birds, but like with, you know, they've just changed up the the powers. And, and the, I bet the levels, more. I bet the levels are all Star Wars based as well. There's yeah, there's a lot of that, and there's a lot of more of like gravity based stuff. So it was actually quite good for certain levels. You know, there would there'd be a moon or whatever, and the gravity of it, you'd have to shoot round to get the shot and stuff, which was quite good. But this is this is nothing like any Angry Birds I've ever played. It's a completely different basic. That just that just made me think actually, because I haven't played it for so long, Angry Birds. When I when I played it, there's, they've added loads of new powers into it, so you can have like a you can aim. Um, you 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 can obviously buy a lot of powers as well from the store you know for real money but yeah you can aim your you know like you normally aim a, a bird and it just flies off you can aim it so it's got like the trajectory to show you where it's going uh, there's one way you can you can have a, a bomb that explodes uh, you've got one that's electrified that you can fire um, uh, there's one way you can target an individual pig and you can kill it so say for example you've got one pig left and you've run out of things i know these are just Lewis ways to cheat these are literally just ways to cheat it's like that that stupid eagle thing which basically wins the level yeah yeah uh, there's also the, they've added feathers into it i know there was always golden eggs but they've added feathers into it and i don't know how the hell you get the feathers i don't even there's no even there's just a, an empty feather when you've got the you know when you've got all three stars filled up there's an empty feather and it's like how, how do i get it i Tell think me. the feathers when you use the eagle or whatever it is to do it I think because you get oh. an extra there's one of them I, I remember when I was playing one of them that I used one of the special abilities and then it went bing 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 and the the thing lit up so it might it might have been that I'm, it's been ages since I played the original one Mm. Yes, yeah, same here. I said when I came back into it, that the levels are the same, but they've just got loads of ways of completing them, and it's like that isn't the fun. The fun is trying yeah. to do them right, perfectly. You know, the first time. Anyway, shall we move on? Unless anyone else has any other games they would like to talk about at this time. No, that's it in terms of what I played. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on to our list section: the way of the exploding list. <laughs> Yeah, that's how we're... We will do something better for that, because that's getting <laughs> worse, I think. I'm, wi I'm waiting for Lou to, to pull his finger out and do some art There's for the graphics, us. man. Yeah, we will do. And I'll have a little button that I'll press. I'll I'll, I'll build something just so I can press the button. You need to punch the button. You need to punch it and the list happens. That's fine. That's fine. I'll do that. It needs um, to be a very large red button, though. Yes. Like, full-blown emphasis. Most definitely. We do not touch. Right we've um, we've got a few suggestions for lists in the uh, in the chat. Best supporting character, best video game cameo. Um, you mine, said like awards. Mine, yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> Favorite <laughs> optional character. Uh, mine, mine is is actually character based. Um, I'll I'll re read it out and we can see if we want to do it or not. Uh, most hated protagonists. <laughs> Ooh. Do you Ooh. like do you like that as a as one we should go with, or should we go with one of the uh, chat? Uh, I quite like that one. I think that could almost be a rant. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right, let's go with yeah. that then. I think we had a good reaction there. Uh, so the the, the general Lydia format, in Skyrim. The, the, let me let me finish. <laughs> let me tell people Whoa. what this is. So this is just a quick list section that we just talk shit over, and I don't know. We, we maybe come up with our top three. So top three hated protagonists: Lydia in Skyrim. The the first the companion you get, not companion, you know, she, the first. She wasn't the a protagonist. Well, she's she was. Oh, I suppose she isn't a protagonist. She's, not, she's no. just no, a she's not. character. Okay, right. Okay, so it has to be like the main character. Do you know what? I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and say Duke Nukem. Because although like I liked it. him, I liked him when I was 16. He's like Limp Bizkit, isn't it? He's a dick. He is just a <laughs> it's dick. It's like liking Fred but not Durst. Only that, he's, he's a dick, but he's also a dick that Now that I know where all the material's from, like, he's stolen all the lines from really great movies. Yeah. It's like, actually, you're a bit shit, Duke. Hmm. Like, why did you do that? You just... I mean, Bruce Campbell has spoken out about how annoyed he was that they'd stolen his lines from well, that, that bubblegum line, the, the, 
That's the, Roddy Piper from the Yeah, Earth. I didn't know that. I thought it was Duke Nukem for, for many years until I met my wife and she told me about They Live. <laughs> Everything is stolen. So yeah. he's kind of, a, a, you know, people like him, but when you think about it, he's actually just a bit of a dick. And not just, but, like, intentionally a dick, but actually a dick. Yeah, but have they have they um, helped him in the slightest? Because after Duke Nukem 3D, has there been anything that's made you want to like Duke Nukem no. since then? Even Duke Nukem 3D, I didn't like him in it, really. He was still a bit of a dick. But the, the, the intro to Duke Nukem Forever, that was possibly the most offensive... I mean, I, I know my blog. The, possibly the most offensive thing that I've ever witnessed in a computer game. He's, he sat there, groaning, watching someone on telly. He's, he's watching himself on telly. Narcissistic bastard, obviously. But that, and we know that's his personality. Getting a blowjob by twins. That is that is the beginning of, of Duke Nukem Forever. And it's he's like, my was, hero. <laughs> All right, right. I, I get that. I understand that point, but it's still. I'm not even doing yeah. it to to be controversial. I just think it it was it was wholly unnecessary. It was way too far in my eyes for even for Duke Nukem. I, I think it could have been a little bit classy, a little bit classier than that. Um, another one I'm going to say is Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Good one. <sighs> what a whiny dick. Yeah. But I mean, then, all all of the protagonists in Final Fantasy games are whiny dicks, but I think Squall is kind of the worst whiny fucking dick. Fucking hell! Someone just said that, and they're about thirty seconds, forty seconds behind us. I think that's I like Leon this again. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go back to Dante. Okay. Try. What a I think that was Leon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was Leon. Yeah. Leon, you're okay by me. Yeah. Um, oh, and um, any of the characters from Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> it's a bit harsh. annoying as and you mean any of the especially you know it has to be protagonist it has to be a protagonist you can't talk about Raiden's a protagonist yeah okay Raiden okay I'll give you Raiden yeah, he's, I, he's I don't think he's a whiny that, dick he's a whiny dick but I, I, there seems not to be this bad. Japanese trope of whiny dick young characters with long hair can I can I throw a really a fairly controversial one into the mix um, I'm going to say uh, I've forgotten his actual name shit <laughs> The guy in Uncharted, Nate. Uh, Nathan Drake. Nathan yeah. Drake. Only because he's trying to be, the original game at least anyway, it was trying to be too many things. He was trying to be Indiana Jones. He was trying to be, um, I don't know, he just, he just, he didn't, he didn't click with me and I, I hate the game so much that I want to put him in there. I'm not going to say anything else. That, that's, that's my contribution. Fair enough. And I can't think of any other any other protagonists that I... It's really hard to think of, like, there's, there's, there's so many, like... Characters that you character. don't like playing. Well, I don't know if it's... Because uh, the thing is, it's not just necessarily a crap character. Like, it's someone that you... You know, I dislike lots of different, uh, you know, the characters like Devil May Cry, whoever the... I can't Dante. even remember the name that, of it. Dante. That was Dante, Steve. Tonight. Didn't, didn't particularly care for him, but like I wouldn't say he's like the worst protagonist ever. Like it's it's a very hard. So thing are we casting protagonists as any playable character? Yeah, including yourself. Um, Ketseth <laughs> from uh, Far Fantasy Seven. Oh God, Who? no! Who? Sorry. It's Ketseth. Ketseth. Oh God. Oh God. Good one. No. Fuck I off. Actually, what? He's, Fucking. He's in. He's in all of them though. No, he's not. Effectively, well, the his character, the yeah, the, the, oh, right. the Moogle sort of thing. Like that's that's just their way of putting it into that game. Someone's just said oh. Lara Croft. All Lara Croft, possibly, but I quite like the uh, reboot. I don't well, think I she had enough of a character. Yet. I really I need to get that. I don't think she had enough of a character in the originals to actually dislike her. She was just she was kind of slightly toffish. Like uh, yeah, she had that posh English posh accent. Posh Toddy Bird, yeah, but she was she wasn't really dislikable. Although saying that, I did do remember spending at least two hours just breaking her neck inside her own house, <laughs> <laughs> swan diving off off the banisters. <laughs> that, that, that just I brought back memories. That oh wow, yeah. I think most people have done that. Um, um, I reckon it's the Monopoly Man from Monopoly. <laughs> what about Please. Leisure Suit Larry? I keep bringing him up every episode. I've never I played like any of those him. Games. He's a bellend. <laughs> well, I like him. Like, I think he's really funny. Like he's, he's also got some of the, the character he's meant to be. He's also got some of the like his, the games have got some of the worst ratings for for games that are actually finished and out there. Some of the worst ratings ever. 
could be mainly because of him, I think, because of his character. He's like a he's like a, a Woody Allen on like a lot of cocaine is the way I'd look at him. <laughs> like really seedy. What about like, what over about, the top? What about Mr. Puniverse from Mr. Puniverse on the spectrum? And the what? Commodore sixty four. It was an old game. Basically, you were yeah, you were the, you were this little two D character. But he was he was again. He was like a skinny guy. He was on a, the cover of the you know of the discs or whatever discs, as if they had discs tapes. Sorry, <laughs> um, he was on the cover of the tapes, and he was like this little skinny dude who held a bar, but or tried to hold a bar. He's like Mister uh, Mister Muscle, you know, the old Mister Muscle type thing. Yeah, that was yeah. his general premise. But he was, I just uh, googled it and I wish I hadn't <laughs> I bet there's Mr. Puniverse porn there's got to be somewhere there's just loads of skinny people with loads of giant like women outfits and, coming yeah. down on them <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Puniverse and giant no 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 I'll leave that alone God damn it, I, I have chosen a hard one here I can't come up with anything there, I'm sure there were games that I've played where I hated the character that I was playing <gasps> as and I can't remember oh my god how did I forget that Assassin's Creed 3 dude fucking Connor Oh my god, I've never hated anyone as much in my life as Connor. Is that the Civil War one? That was the... Uh, it wasn't because he was a, a Native American. It was because he was a bellend. It was because he was a... He was a... He was so shallow and so whiny all the way through the game. And fair enough, his, his ambition was noble. He wanted to help his people and save his people, but he very he did very little towards that through the entire game. He was just sitting there complaining about it and having a go at everybody who was trying to help him. Fuck off, Connor. It was a shit. That's why they only did Assassin's Creed 3 <laughs> and they didn't do any more games for Assassin's Creed 3. I know you're going to hate me for this, but I'm going to say, say CJ from San Andreas. Whoa. You know what? He's he's Whoa. not. He's, well, yeah, I'm Hold glad up. there's someone else on me and Sam's side. I'll, I'll go with that. you. I, I know. I, I agree. Just did not like him. I, I liked the character. I actually disliked a lot of his friends more, but I liked the character of CJ. But that you know, Nico Bellic again. He's a bit I of like a bellend. I like Nico Bellic. I like Nico no. Bellic. Uh, he was just very much <laughs> of a non-event. Tommy Vassetti. He was his friend though. Like I, I put in the guy. Who's the guy that keeps calling him all the time? Nico, let's go bowling. Oh, oh. It's your cousin, Roman. Roman, Roman. Roman cousin yeah. Roman. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, well, uh, God, I wish. Actually, you know what? I wish we'd done for, uh, worst sidekicks now because I've, I've just come up with a million, million have just popped well, into my head. We'll do that next time. Yeah, let's do that next time. I'll put a note down. Um, yeah, I can't think of any more unless we, unless anyone else does. We'll move on to the news because. Um, there's a lot of characters like that you don't actually have a character though and that's I think that's even worse like there's... really? you can't hurt them for that though I fucking can oh, you, yeah alright you can Destiny <laughs> yeah I fucking like the, the fact that my character is not a character pissed me right off well like, that, was, that... There's, there's nothing for me I'm not it's my destiny to save the world but there's 40 million more of me doing the exact same thing. Are you into um are you into RPGs in general? Yeah. So you you like character you like games that don't have a main character that you are just the hero where it's you when you can it, oh, you know, know, take that like role Skyrim. In. Skyrim you may you, you kind of get some backstory to you but you are your own you make your own character. That's that's the difference. That I I think that's probably why I'm saying Destiny in, in the sense of like I have this cutscene with someone and like they're like, you've done this, and it's like, I haven't done anything. <laughs> and and, and li literally, the whole idea is like, I've been revived from nothingness, and like, oh, I could I could tell you the story of the 150 year war, but we won't go into that. It's like, well, hold on. <laughs> you can read a, a you can read a book about it later on anyway. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got another one. Go on. Kratos from God of War. Specifically, two onwards. Yeah, um, I think Sam would agree with it there. He's he's commented yeah. before saying that. He's a bit of a dick from from two yeah. onwards. Well, one, he's kind of got a reason to go on rampage, but two, he's just been a prick. And three, I haven't played uh, well, the PSP version. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, well, I mean, maybe that's part of his character, though. Maybe that's the drive for his character. Uh, no, but in the first one, you were like, you, you were avenging your family. You know, you had a reason. You were going there, but this the second one, the third one, you just seem to be out of fuck. You know, just make a mess of everything and. I I kind of think, think this is the Duke, same thing as Duke Nukem in that I think as the games have gone on they've got the wrong grasp of what it was that people latched onto with the character like they thought oh the people like him because he was a dick so we'll make him more of a dick 
and it's not why you like him. Mm. I think that's probably what they're doing with their Kratos. I've not played the God of War series either, way, by the way. But uh... what about Ethan? I'm trying to find his second name. Ethan from, Marr from from, um, from Heavy Rain. No, I never played, played, played Heavy Rain. Never played it. Oh, I can say he's not. I wouldn't say he's a particularly hated, but he just ma- he does make some terrible decisions. He's you know he's he could he could be he could make better life choices. I think in general. Um, yeah, All I've heard of for that game from other people is the Jason press stuff. Press X to Jason, yeah. That's how I found him. I just found Ethan by typing in press X to Jason into Google just then. <laughs> right, let's move on then. Let's move on to our next section, which is gaming news, rumours, things that we're interested in, releases, upcoming, stuff that has come out this week that we're interested in. Yeah. To start off with, has anybody got anything specific they'd like to talk about? Because we have a list as long as our arm this week. Can I start? Feel free. So something that um, something that I'm really happy about. For a long time, I have been watching um, a, a, a stream, not a stream actually, but a, but a regular YouTube series um, for um, Supreme Commander Forge Alliance. Now, Forge Alliance has been run under something called Forge Alliance Forever, which is like a, a, a fan-made lobby system that lets you play Supreme Commander because the original servers were shut down. Um, but this guy, Guile, does excellent casts of games. Like He covers, basically, um, he commentates over games like he would professional sports. Um, he's been out of action for probably six, seven months. And I've really missed it. And I've been watching him again recently. Oh, bloody hell. Um, apologies. Mute your phone. Oh, you're <laughs> fired. You're fired. Um yeah it's just they're really good to watch he does brilliant commentary it doesn't really matter if you're not even you don't even understand the game because you can watch a few of these and you will get to grips with the game if you do like the game i highly recommend you watch it if you're into real-time strategy at, at all or if you just want to you know watch if you like watching games highly recommend guile on um on youtube um he's forge alliance forever casts it's just nice to see him back Cool. So that's I, one of the big things for me. I do, I do ad- admire commentators, people who can really, you know, do it, do it justice. And mm. I've never really watched any game comments. I'm not into watching games that much. Uh, you know, I prefer to play games when I have the time to do it. But I know it's becoming quite a big thing now. And if he's if he's doing that, he should probably be on Twitch as well. I imagine. I think that's one of the the things, like because you guys are not, you know, sports games fans or anything like that. But that's the the big difference, like especially coming from the Madden world, like. There's, you know, there's people that do the pack openings and all this kind of stuff. But actually, when you you get the the kind of character that you can watch a game like, look, a game of Madden is the same game every time. But you know, random of different things happen in the NFL. Like it's, you know, there might be a, you know, a touchdown error or whatever it is. But like being ab- able to entertain someone with the commentary level over it, or you know, it, it is a talent because there's certain games, you know, it is boring as fuck listening to someone talk over the top of it. Um, you know, we we've we Leon does a Final Fantasy. He did a Final Fantasy one, and I was falling asleep at one point. But everyone was <laughs> loving it uh, because, like, he was going into the depth of, oh, this is what I was feeling the first time I I played this game, and, and so on. And it, it does make a big difference when someone. It's almost like a narrator for like what what's going on at that time. Um, and there's 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 a lot of them out there, and there's a lot of talented people out there. But it is. You know, there's there's certainly a level of um, some people are at this level, and then some people are like there's, what you're saying. You f- you feel something when you you're actually listening. There's a difference between waffle and and you know interesting commentary as well, isn't there? Um, yeah. Mm. There's, a, there's also an argument there as well. I've I've played a few sports games in my time, and the commentators on sports games are also a thing that that I know it's not a real person, but it, it's also a thing that's. Um, be get, getting a lot better. I remember when I played UFC 2009 or 2008, mm-hmm. I think it was. I remember listening to the commentators on that and I was going, they are actually reacting to what I'm doing on the screen pretty goddamn well. You know, yeah. after after a good few hours of playing, they started repeating themselves, but 
I, I was I was like, just, they could be an actual commentator. That's amazing. We've, we've, we've come a long way from the old FIFA games with Andy Gray saying the same three things over <laughs> and over, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got the ball. Well, the, the, oh! <laughs> the, the scary thing is for the newest U- UFC, because I'm a huge UFC fan in general anyway, but um, Joe Rogan uh, talked about on his podcast about how much he had to do before the thing. And um, there's 17 hours of different stuff that he says. Now, certain things will never ever happen. You know, you, you know, he could, you know, the jump off the. Now you're getting the crazy stuff coming into UFC because it's actually happening in the UFC, and they have to have some kind of commentary over the top of it. But um, when the the latest one came out, because I was a huge fan of Undisputed, and I'm I'm really on the wall on the EA one because. They've done some things brilliantly, and then other things. I'm like, this is just—it's made it too easy to do certain mm. things on there. The the commentary, you know, realistically, you could if you ignore, you know, every time you've played it before, they won't repeat the same thing in the same fight. So you could have five round five five rounds of five minutes. And it's all completely different things. Even though you could be doing the same shit over and over again, you could be on top of him, elbowing him in the head, and they'll find a different. There's a different thing that they'll they'll talk about, um, and it has really, you know, progressed quite a lot. You, you know, I'm not a FIFA fan. Uh, Madden does it very well. Uh, I'm a big, big uh, Madden fan, and you know, there's certain things that they get. They they've hit the nail on the head for it, and I think it's over the next five six years you're going to see more of that happening because they made a massive deal about um, like the sidelines on Madden like, and it really pissed me off because they, like, for once something would happen and the whole you know, all your coaching staff and stuff would like cheer and uh, like you'd have the whole crowd reaction happening properly. And it sounds like a little thing but it no. always used to piss me off but it happens occasionally and then other times you could throw the game winning touchdown with three seconds left and it cuts to your coach doing the normal walk back and forth, and you're like, "What the fuck? You just won the game!" Like, like how how can it be that it shouldn't be that cut and dry? They should should, you know, we're getting so integrated into the games now, and that's I think one of the the, the beauties of you know the sports game or whatever that they have. That you know, look at the crowd of you know any game, you know FIFA, Madden, Sensible UFC, soccer. whatever. Yeah, go back 15 years and look at that crowd. Or even go back four years mm. and look at what the crowd was. WWE is a, a prime example of, you know, there used to literally be like a cardboard cutout the of me boards. going like yep. this. <laughs> and, and now it's like this depth. And I, I know it's not the most intricate thing in the world, but that's, that's No, but it makes that a big difference. But the, spectacle. The, the same thing applies for any game, though. They're becoming more realistic. They're becoming more immersive as well. And we've, talk, again, talked about immersion quite a lot on this on this podcast. But, the, yeah, the fact that if you play sports games and you're into them, you want that because you want to yeah. feel like you're there. When I was playing that UFC game, I, that's the last sports game I played pretty much, um, I, I was amazed by the the impact you know the fact when you got punched you could see it you could see them rippling and uh, yeah. you could you could see you know they got bloody during the match and the, you, th- there was fidelity in your movements and it wasn't just set movements like some of the earlier UFC stuff but yeah I, I like it I like that I like that they're doing that in games and, and it's about time they started you know really pushing it that kind of thing oh thank you very much uh, Catch Chaos who just followed us I think he's our maybe first or second follower on the uh, since we got the the thing popping up. I, don't what? ruin the magic. Loads what? of people have followed us. What? <laughs> I heard he was the seventeen thousandth first. Yes. No, no, no. I meant yes. since I put the word since, of the since grapevine put, was. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Coming in. Coming what in. Whatever. <laughs> <sighs> um, another thing I saw just today actually um, was they released a trailer for a possible Terraria sequel stroke spin-off thing. Ooh, um, ooh ex- indeed, yeah, we, we, we quite liked uh, Terraria when we played it. So this is t- called Terraria Otherworld, um, and I'll post the RPS article into the chat. Looks very nice. Spin-off um, by who, though? Um, it's by, I think it's by the same company. Um, um, da, 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 da. Confirmed as a PC and Mac game, yes. 
But yeah, uh, <laughs> I watched I've watched the the teaser trailer for it, and it it looks like they've given it some 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 love. It looks really nice. I think one of my big buzz with um, with Terraria was it looked a bit crap. It's it got, looked a bit amateurish. It's got real logic and engine software in the uh, title. So is it real logic who did the original, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, that's what they're working on at the moment. It I could like be interesting. Logic. I love Terraria. To, I loved it. It seems to have more RPG elements to it as well. Uh, Terraria kind of did it well, but but um. And I've heard, I've heard a lot of stuff about Starbound as well. You weren't a big fan of it, were you, Chris? Um, I've played a fair amount of it. I've played oh, quite okay. a few hours. I mean, when I say I'm not a... I say it's in beta. Um, I've played 20 hours of it, so I think I'm, you know... I've played enough for, for a free it. game to be, you know, to be worth it. But, I mean, I think it's one of those that I'll wait until the full game's out, then I might start <laughs> playing it properly, you <laughs> and then know? wait till it's in a, a, a stale... <laughs> I've got it. I bought. Well, I've, I've, I was I was gifted it by one of our fan, one of our uh, followers actually. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm up for that. I'm up for that. To, uh, any ending yeah. Terraria, I thoroughly enjoyed every moment we spent in that game. There was a very nice teaser trailer for it, and it's worth watching there. Yeah. The only did, other yeah. thing that I've got um, is uh, another thing that I caught recently. Basically, the team who made the original Ultima Underworld, which was the inspiration for pretty much every game that we love including Doom um, John Carmack was inspired by this game the original team uh, are running a Kickstarter at the moment for a game called Underworld Ascendant and I'll paste a link to that in there this looks very interesting Ooh. but it also possibly looks quite um, quite ambitious well There's it's got a $600,000 goal so I it think doesn't, it doesn't it's already nearly there I mean it's 15 days ago and it's 468,000 so it's definitely getting there. I mean, the um, <laughs> the top tier backing is is gone. So someone put ten grand into it. In fact, four people did. Yeah. <laughs> so there's four individual ten grand donations gone in there. I think this is going to be huge. And what they're talking about when you look through some of the updates, they're talking about this could be a very, very, very good game and really hark back to, you know, the 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 feel of games like Skyrim. But, Deus Ex, Bioshock, Dragon Age, Thief. Yeah, they, they really want to make a game which is um, a game that you you create your own character in, and you live inside that world. System it sounds shock. very interesting. That all of the influences for this game are the the, the games that I love. The the type. Uh, the well, no, these aren't these aren't the, these aren't influences for the game. These are the games that were influenced by the original Ultima Underworld. Right, and they okay. want to now pay, pay that back off by making their own modern version of Ultima Underworld, which inspired all these games. Count me in. I think this is worth watching, definitely. Yeah, count me in there, definitely. Cool. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit of a not not want to say rant, but I'm gonna talk about a few of the few of the things I've seen this week. The Assassin's Creed movie is in production. Oh. <sighs> Honestly. Do, do do we are you are you excited about that, Mike? Not for shit. God, thank you. <laughs> I, I was. I, I, it's gone into production. It's going to be a multi-million dollar film, probably, and it's going to be just as shit as all the games, probably. Is Louis Ball directing it by any chance? <laughs> I'm not sure. If I, not, I, it should be. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember. I haven't looked much be. about it. Won't it won't be Louis Ball. Unfortunately, the link that I've got isn't working at the moment. But I'll paste it into I'll paste it's it in the chat anyway. It's one of those things that, like, actually, if it, if it had never been a um, a, ga a game and there was a premise for a film, and like, because I I fell off Assassin's Creed so fast. Like the first one, I was like, this is cool, loved the idea, like the the background stuff. I fell in love with it. The second one was like, this is the same, <laughs> and this is the same. Oh, there's a ship! Whoa, pirates! hold me back like yeah like I, it, it's just the same old stuff but it's annoying that if actually you know if the the idea of that original game wasn't ever there like the whole being in a cgi thing and you know the the idea of the first one as a film premise could be quite interesting it'll be shit though it will like, be shit someone was someone was going to me oh well what you know sometimes they do it right what about Hitman? I was like, Hitman was one of the worst films I've ever physically like. I've I, I spent the whole time watching it, going, she's quite fit. I'm not sure what it is about her, but she's quite attractive, and that's all I got from that film. 
Um, I never so, watched it, and I wouldn't watch it. I, I've got she, more respect for it, Timothy Oliphant than that. It's, it's worth it for that. Like, it's free. There's an attractive lady roaming around. That's about all I, I enjoyed from it. Um, I, I think it'll be a pile of shit. And yeah, I the just, more I money just, they blow in it, the better. I mean, I. I to be honest, I'd rather have not give it any kind of publicity, I have to be honest, but it's not like we've got droves of people watching this and, and we're influencing many people, but you know, it's it's not something I'm I'm bought into. Not only do I not like game movie tie ins in general, there's very few we've again we've had a we have had a show about this before, but there's very few that we that, that have fitted and worked. But the fact that Assassin's Creed and, and again, Ubisoft are involved it just drives me at the wall. I've totally and utterly gone off Ubisoft. They're gonna they're gonna have to release something amazing yeah, for trouble. me to for me to get back into them. And I hope they, I hope they go down. I really do. I, they, they pissed a lot of people off. I, I was very pissed off with Watch Dogs. Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't buy it. I was waiting for the out for the outcry. I was actually I didn't buy it because um, I was a bit annoyed that my game that I'm developing had a similar kind of concept to it and I was a little bit like, nah, fuck you it sounds awesome, but fuck you, fuck you and then I'm glad I didn't because the hype was immense, they're brilliant at marketing they're brilliant at getting people to buy their stuff and pre-order their stuff, but when they actually produce a game, one they're all the same fucking game every single one of them, and yeah. I say this every episode and I'm, these two are <laughs> sick to death of me but I'm going to drill it into everybody who watches this, every Ubisoft game that gets released and I'm talking about Far Cry, I'm talking about Assassin's Creed, and I'm talking about everything else that they've ever they've done in recent years at least, are all run around, open up an area by climbing a tower of some sort and then go and do loads of little side quests, uh, and there's a main mission that yeah. you have to follow, it's the same thing it's just different premise, you know, different IP as they refer to it which it isn't really Ugh. they annoy and, me because every time I watch the um, the e like they're the ones that like the E3 conference and the you know every conference that you go to and like when we went to Gamescom and when you know anytime we've been to like a big fuck off event and there's like uh, you know stuff for it they know how to sell shit mm. they should work for me because they can sell sh fucking ice to an Eskimo. It does not <laughs> matter. Like, you know they're going to do the same shit, but you fall into it. Every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, hold on. Is it, um, <laughs> what, are the, what are the Tom Clancy ones? Like, they've got uh, one, haven't they? Rainbow Six. Spent yeah. to sell loads of stuff. The, no, no, no. What are, the, what, the, what are the two this year, or meant to be this year? Is it the same? Oh, the crew. Uh, is it the crew? Division. No. A divided. Oh, the division. Divided. The division. The division's divided. one, and I think Siege is the other. And I look at them and I go, oh my god, I want that game so much. I want that game so much. I, like I need to have division. that. And then, right, so we went to Gamescom, and um, we, were, we were around, and this, this queue for the division was ridiculous. Like, I mean, the whole day. Now, luckily, some of the people that we'd gone to Gamescom to see were um, developers, like, they had a Sony pass and they had this and that, and they, they'd kind of gone in earlier in the day and they went, look, we'll bring you a bit, a bit of food or whatever, let us in the last one, we don't want to wait all day, let's, let's just hit up at the end of the day. And, uh, and we were like, yes, we're going to play The Division. No. Nope. We're going to watch the same shit that they fucking released at E3. And I was like, hold on, <laughs> this is exactly the same thing they did six months ago. With oh, a wait, bit of wait, extra wait. shine on it or something. No, 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 wait. With a German exactly. person talking over the top of it. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, no, there was one added bit after it that was maybe 17 seconds long. And so do you, the, do you reckon that was just like a carefully choreographed sort of... It's like the... Do you remember the, the stuff that came for... Um, for Watch Dogs? Do you remember all that stuff? The, yeah, the gameplay, exactly the gameplay the video. Exactly exactly the same they had someone playing um for part of it they had someone playing the thing but it was literally they had like they were they were i can't remember who the person was that they had there but they were talking about this and i was like oh there, there's some high level elite you know pro gamer or whatever but that was their gig they're getting paid however mm. many thousand pounds to this is how you play this level and mm. they would nail it exactly the same way and that must have been that was a half an hour briefing, and that was going from nine o'clock till six o'clock. So that guy must have had you know fifteen minute break here, 
same thing, same thing, same thing. And it's it, it's annoying because you buy into the hype, and I can't help myself sometimes. I look at it and I'm like, I just I just want to I want to be a kid again. Sometimes I just want to fall in love with that. Like you want to get oh, rid of that, that cynicism. Is, yeah, I, I just want something to absolutely blow my mind, like just be on a, a, a next level. Last game that and did that to me that I can think of off the top of my head is Skyrim, though. That really mm. did. Well, maybe Oblivion, actually. I think Skyrim was, you know, I'd already done a little bit with, with that. But Oblivion oh. really did kick my ass when it came out. Can I um, do a segue from that, if we're talking about news? Go on, then. Yeah. Because there was a, an announcement that someone's going to be doing an E3 conference for the first time go on and that'd be bethesda oh and that's gotta be fallout 4 it's gotta be <sighs> all the next elder scrolls it's there's so there's a list of the stuff but it, they've they've announced they're going to do an e3 show have um, they never done they, one before i'm not i'm one. not really into the conferences because i can never get to them so i don't really again jealousy i'll cut it off and not pay any attention <laughs> <laughs> We, we we go to some of the like the shows but we'll never go to like you know i'm never getting an e3 tickets or anything for game over yeah but um we always do a commentary on you know what what we're all you know you watch the show and we always have this thing on game over the air of like what was the hype or, like what was the thing that you're like yeah that is gonna hit or that was yeah that was yeah. a lot of sales speech but Bethesda have never, you know, they they could have. Uh, I know you said you you're a big fan of Dishonored. They could do a Dishonored two. There's a lot of things that they can hit. But I'm literally at the top of the list. Like, they've never done one before, and everyone's waiting for Far Cry four. Wouldn't it be amazing if they just kicked the doors down and just said, "There it is." You mean Fallout, not Far Cry? Fucking Far Fallout. Cry. Yeah. 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 Fuck Far, Far Cry. Dishonored, Dishonored, Ubisoft, isn't it? <laughs> Too much, too much alcohol. <laughs> I, I always, I always get them confused as well. People are going like, "That didn't happen in that game." I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, oh, oh, Fallout. Sorry, but no. Um, yeah, the, if if they've got a, a long list of games that they could they could go on with. I mean, Elder Scrolls Online. If that's the the thing that they're going to talk about, no. they're going to have a pretty it's rough time. That not... It could be Doom. Could be it could because oh, they've, yeah. the, they've got the they've got the license and stuff. They're, they're, they're running yeah, the show. They like, did Wolfenstein, didn't they? That was excellent. I don't think it is though. I, I, know, I, I think it, I think is, it might be Doom. I don't think you'd announce it this far before E3 unless it's something that is going to like. Uh, it really annoys me because you you hear a lot of the hype and stuff and all this. You know, there's levels of people talking this and the the, the chatter on the internet and stuff. But then it doesn't land, and you think, like, your PR person, like, you started that seven months before it's going to happen, or four months before it's going to happen, or whatever, and you overblew it. Like, why would you do that? And I think there's some companies that land it really well. They start talking the whispers a little bit, you know, they, they give that little thing. Uh, I mean, uh, Ubisoft's really good at it, but they never land the actual game. But they're, they're, <laughs> they're throwing them little whispers in there and you get so hyped up for it and i really hope it is just uh, uh you know I'd, re I'd i'd like it if it was a dishonored any bethesda game like i was looking at the list i was like they've got some really solid titles that they there's, could... so there's something about bethesda that that i mean that I, I'm a, I was a big id fan obviously before they got bought out they haven't really in my eyes released any id titles mm -hmm. that have been very good since they bought them no, in no, my no. eyes but every bethesda title I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, that. Mm -hmm. I've played at least. Anyway, I know. Um, didn't they? Weren't they involved in um, uh, what was that? That parkour one? Um, Blink. Mirrors. Was um, Blink. Yeah. Or was yeah, that splash Woodburn. damage? No, I think it was Blink, wasn't? No, sorry, splash damage. I think was the pub the publisher or the developer. Actually, I might be talking at my ass there. But anyway, I, I, there's not many that I can think of off the top of my head that I haven't enjoyed and. I, I, yeah, I'm the same. I would love anything by them. I'd love anything that they release because they they put effort into the games. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're all slightly different, and even if they do use a similar format, like all the Elder Scrolls games, there's a lot of new lore that goes into them. There's a, not, a lot of new um, character. There's a lot of new dialogue, and they, they always they always implement a new system as well. They always try and add something into the game that wasn't in previous games. That's that's significant, I'd say. 
so yeah I'm up for that I'm definitely up for them um do you I remember re- um, last week, uh, I forget who mentioned it, I think it might be me, but I mentioned um, Destruction Derby mm-hmm. off yeah. the cuff. Um, there's actually a game um, that's looking very nice and very similar to it, so I'll put a link in the chat. Uh, it's called Next Car Game Wreckfest, which essentially is an updated version of, uh, of Demolition Derby. Cool. I've seen this, yeah. I, I saw some like a tech demo where they had like, this giant sandbox where you just drive around and smash cars up, and it looked great. It does look really good. It's early access at the minute, um, but I'm quite tempted. Early I've, access. I've always found those games ultimately a bit unsatisfying, though. Like, they don't it's last a, for very long. No, no, but it'd be good for, let's say, a LAN. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but only for one, though. Like, it's... He's it's throwing you a hint there. It's one of the weekends. <laughs> Get it? It's subtle, isn't it? <laughs> Is it actually at ESL Access now? Yeah. Maybe. Fucking um, hell! Just, I'm just looking at... Sorry, totally unrelated. I'm just looking at stretch goals for that um, Underworld Ascent thing. I just happen to have the programme... Some big numbers there, isn't there? 12, yeah. one. What, what, I can't even say the number. One mil, one point two million dollars is a stretch goal. I know it takes a lot to build a game. Sorry, I'm. Th- they're, they're, they're thinking around the same sort of level as um, Elite Dangerous and um, and what's the other one? Uh, it's uh, Space Star Citizen. Star Citizen. I think they're they're thinking uh, they're going to get the same kind of following as them. Hmm. Sorry, yeah. Steve. Go on. I was just thinking it looks like somewhat a bit different. Well, not different, but something we haven't had for a while. Something a bit fun, you know. I jump in, jump out. Brain power. Yeah. Just smashing into each other for fun. I thought we were doing that anyway this weekend. Just without cars. Oh, I wasn't thinking of cars. <laughs> no, just yeah. thinking with we'll our glands. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't worry, Chris. I was on your same wavelength. Yeah, it's fine. Well, you've had a few, you've had a few to drink, so obviously. <laughs> um, Right, one thing I am absolutely horrified by, absolutely horrified by, and <laughs> and Mike, uh, when I was on your show, I had a bit of a rant about about this. Um, Insta Doom, which is a new Doom mod that's come out, has has brought Ooh. out a, a selfie stick <laughs> and a, an a, and a Instagram filter, so you can take selfie st- and and if you look at the photos on the link, I'll post it into chat. It it is a bit like look at lose reaction you, if you take it in that way that's okay but the fact that it's even in doom the fact that they've, they've added this in there is just fuck off fuck off with your <laughs> selfie sticks <laughs> fuck off with your fucking modern shit i'm getting to an age now where i don't want anything new to come out ever so stop it <laughs> stop doing new things that are modern and popular and ev- all the kids love it uh, <laughs> Imagine, i saw this news like... article and i thought it was a joke so did I, and I, I, I had to, I, I had to look it up and make sure it wasn't a joke. I thought, I thought, oh, is it April the first? Because we're getting up to that, are we? No, it's not April the first, so it can't be that. <laughs> Fucking hell, honestly. I love that. Sorry, the I don't off, really no, love you it. You don't. You're not coming this weekend. <laughs> what, You're not coming. What this would week. you say is the um, the best April the first? Uh, this is I, almost like a list. Here, I but still, like, uh, I still like the um, the Google Pigeon Farm one from years ago. Where they said that their their server their their server center was was basically uh, run by pigeons, and and people <laughs> actually believed it at the time. But it was it was very clever. It was before everybody was really onto April the first. I think you forget you, sometimes, don't you? Yeah, because that you only ever, started when the internet came on. Shut up. Did you ever get the um? I can't remember when it was, but um the the Google one with the Pokemon thing. No. Did you not? Oh, so this took over my life for the first, the whole day. If you went on Google Maps, there were Pokemon all over the world, and you had to try and find 151 of them. And there so wasn't if you any. You went to the, um, uh, you know, the Eiffel Tower. There'd be a Dragonite or whatever. And literally, I spent five hours on Google Maps just <laughs> searching places like. It's got to be here. It's, I remember something like here. that. Was it not? I, if you collected all one hundred fifty-one, you actually got made a Pokemon Master by Google. Well, that oh was the God. joke. That was the that was the that was the over the top part. That yeah. was the bit where they actually did the, you know, if you can find one hundred and fifty-one. But the actual game of going around the world, because uh, at the start everyone was going, well, I can find. Like if you go to Japan, there was hundreds of them really quickly, but they were all the same ones over and over again. So you're like. Mm. Where's one? And like someone would go, what about Loch Ness Monster? And you go Loch Ness and 
sure enough, there was whatever in Loch Ness, and there was literally there was they pasted across the whole world Pokemon, and I spent four hours at work, maybe more. Like, where the fuck is the next one <laughs> trying to find it? It was, it was great. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. There was, um... Although I can imagine that not a lot of work going in, uh, not a lot of work got done in quite a few offices out there. April the first, I'm sure no work gets done. We have a so we have um, a couple of pranks that we do at work for new people that um, yeah. aren't ready for it. So the first one's the sellotape trick. So we have like the the um, door to the office. So you come out the the back of the shop and there's a main place, and then there's the door to the office, and you put two rolls of sellotape across about where your face would be and as you walk to that door you, 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 you're you not going to see it so you just walk through sellotape effectively but this this became like how how can we you know one up it and stuff and it just comes to the point where like we put sellotape in random places where people could trip over and die but you know it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a laugh of it. <laughs> oh well <laughs> well it's not like yeah we don't construct a snake pit for it <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we have a joke we play on uh, some of the apprentices where you uh, switch the M and the N key around on the keyboard and because <laughs> all kids these days are completely illiterate they don't notice and they can't figure out what the hell's going on nice okay. you know this Google Pigeon thing that I've just said is actually I've just done a search for it Google Pigeon is actually a thing that's coming out this year uh, sorry came out last year and it's improving local searches on uh, thing, and the thing that I'm thinking of, I can't find it anywhere. So I don't know where the hell I've come up with Google Pigeon because I didn't even know about that. Um, made it up. But there is, there was, there was one. There is something they did where they, they 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 said that the server farm was run by some something something weird. I'm going to try and find it. In the meantime, um, let's talk about the next thing. Um. So. Go on. Well, I've got I've got another one, another RTSE one, but uh, something I spotted recently. I don't know how long it's been going, but um, there's something called Open RA, which is basically a remake of um, the old Command and Conquer games. Like, uh, right. allows you to play like the old, the really old stuff, and also Dune Two, I think, or Dune Two Thousand. Yeah, Dune Two Thousand. It is. That looks really interesting. I'd like to play those old games again. Yeah. On modern computers with modern features so that's definitely worth a look and i know that there's um there's a land coming up uh where people are going to be playing that as well so yeah is it our land that. it's not no no <laughs> i said it's what it's land ops well, we can play it at our land as well we could do yeah i'll give you a bash if you want to have your asses handed to you <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen actually Right. But yeah, it's, it's worth a look. It was 2000, sorry, again, back onto the pigeons. 2002, <laughs> and it was called Google Pigeon. It was 2002, Google Pigeon Rank, and it was basically a, a, a search algorithm, and they said that pigeons basically were the, the engine behind their search algorithm for the thing. And uh, it's, if you look on, again, I'll put a, a Wikipedia entry onto into chat. But yeah, if you scroll down to 2002 under the search ranks, it's there. But yeah, I remember that specifically when it happened, and uh, I'm Fair done. Enough. I think this April the first, some company should have the balls to launch their products, like but but full blown because everyone goes, yeah. ah, it's the April Fools. What? Oh shit, it's real! Like like you know, well, they did that. Nail it. Wasn't a goat simulator, wasn't that? Yeah, goat April simulator Fools turned into a game. That is a joke, though. About simulators don't. No. Uh, I I hate them. Yeah, but you're just a goat simulator. I the, hate it. The, the fact <laughs> the fact that goat simulator was so popular, I think it, I wouldn't say annoyed me because it, to, to be fair, the developers, you know, they put a bit of effort into it. They were taking a piss out of simulators at the end of the day, and it just so happened that the public went, "Oh my god, it's a goat simulator! Let's get on it and buy loads of them." Fucking so idiots. we have this ongoing thing that it, it can it, or it, at this level of alcohol, it could start a rage, but <laughs> I I hate those simulators. But anyway, we were on a we were on a cast once, and um, someone brought up Rock Simulator. So I don't know if you know about Rock Simulator, but anyway, I'm nice. like they're they're talking anyway, and I'm going, I I don't know why you're getting like annoyed. Like this sounds like a Guitar Hero. This sounds like a you know this 
this actually could work as a simulator. They were like, no, rock, like as a in, pebble. Yeah. And I was just, boom. <laughs> There's 20 minutes of me destroying set, effectively. Well, like, I've had enough yeah. of this stuff. It you've should seen, not continue. You've seen the, the, the new game that the same studio that did Goat Simulator brought out, which is called Toast. Yeah. And it's just basically toast. You, the the idea is for you to get bread into. Oh no, it's called bread. I think. No, it's I yeah. am bread. Is I am bread. Oh, oh God. God. I, see, I just pay that much attention. Again, apparently, it's quite skillful to get this piece of bread around. You use if if you're on a um, if you're on a joypad, you use all four of the buttons to hold each different corner of the bread, and you move yourself around. It's like a quop type thing, you know. It's just really difficult to 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 control it. Um, I haven't played it. I've seen it being played. Again, they're making a packet of it. You know, they're, they're making a fortune oh, from it because it's. It doesn't any do anything point, for me. If, um, if anyone that's a console gamer gets told you're a lesser being and the PC is the master race, these are the people that create these games. Stop <laughs> them now. <laughs> no, it's, 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 just, it's just silly. It's like, you know, there's a joke level and then there's a joke level. And then, like, Go Simulator, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of funny, and it's a game, and it's actually a game, in a sense. Like, they, they put a lot of stuff in over the top, uh, and then it, it just... Uh, I like to I have to be honest, you know what did it for that, I think, is that video. They did a video of the yeah. Dead Island uh, video, which was, again, a very popular video. The game didn't do itself, do the video any justice, justice but, yeah... Um, it was just again they were just taking a piss and, and I think kudos to them as developers they've done some people have bought it they've got somewhere but I, it doesn't do anything for me personally you know no. I haven't actually bought but got a simulator I don't know what what it plays like I've seen lots of videos it's just a sandbox it's like a physics sandbox basically you just go and you can throw things around so um this is a bit of news that I probably liked Sammy for I've got to be honest with you because he's uh, he was a big fan of this but um the last guardian which is a for those who haven't heard of it, Ico was a game on the PlayStation 2, I believe it was, and yeah, The Last yeah. Guardian is a new version of that. I think there's uh, not version, mm -hmm. it's the, the spiritual su successor to it, and it's been on the radar for years, years and years and years. It's disappeared and then come back and then disappeared, and then the team have left, and whispers, the team have left, and whispers. they've. Yeah, the team have left and started making another game called Rhyme, R I M E, um, and they, they've. Um, they're they're on with it and they're releasing screenshots and updates quite regularly. But the Last Guardian, was it Sony that were doing it? Yeah. What was the Can't studio? I think, yeah. yeah, Sony still. Yeah, Sony. So the studio, the studio that were doing it, they said no. We're still working on it. We're still definitely working on it. We're still definitely working on it. But they've just let the US trademark slip. So does that mean that they're cancelling it? And does is that a good thing or a bad thing? In my I eyes, I heard something about someone else there was someone confirmed after that no we are don't worry about that but I, I don't know if that's just me reading crap on the internet or something no, and there's a lot of things that can cause it they might have just changed the name of it well yeah that, there's a lot of um how 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 it runs and stuff but i, I the thing is it would be a stupid move not to like, yeah, it's, but it has it's... been in development for so long now. I mean, people want it, but <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but it might be due to okay. forever syndrome. Y yeah, but the, at the same time, sometimes it lands. You know, <laughs> you look at Blizzard; <laughs> they've they've done it a couple of times where it's been fifteen years. Yeah, you're like shit. Is this gonna? Oh, there's the money. There's the money. See, the Blizzard, last time the Blizzard have also done that and actually not released games is StarCraft Ghost, which. Uh... Which I was really looking forward to, which just never happened. Was that was that a COD they're, ghost? They're renaming tie -in. it though. Sorry. They 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 they're, that's because it's going to become something else, isn't it? Uh, no, they dropped the FPS completely. one. Yeah, yeah, the FPS one. There's another FPS that they're going to work on. All right. They're, I know that they're, they're working they're, on that that new uh, MOBA style game. There's 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 two. I I could have sworn because Leon's a huge Blizzard person. He was saying something about the the ghost Overwatch. idea. Uh, is it Overwatch? I think that's I, I the, new, the new the new the uh, new IP that they're working on is Overwatch. Yeah, but he, he I I could quite clearly remember someone saying something. Maybe it wasn't him. It was uh, about how Ghost was disintegrating the idea of Ghost, but it was going to be effectively they they put their eggs into a different basket because they still do want to do that idea. 
Mm. And I, I, I'm the same as you because when I first heard of like a, you know, a StarCraft first-person shooter, I was like, okay, yep, here's my money. How much <laughs> of it do you want? It <laughs> looks <laughs> really good. The, the screenshots you know are fantastic. Put, put the card, like, put it on one of them ones where I don't have to put my password in every time because I'll click it every fucking time if you need it. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I, I hate Blizzard because they are, <laughs> they, they kill me every time. They, they are the people that got me into games. Warcraft One was my first ever proper, apart from you know, it was my first PC game ever um, that I really, I fell in love with because you know I had Mario and you know console games and everyone has. You know, realistically, everyone starts that con. Well, maybe Ataris and things like that, but for there was a lot of console love. But uh, Warcraft One, I remember clearly going to. I think it was Comet. It must have been Comet because Comet's not around anymore. Comet trying to find Warcraft Two and them only having the demo version that you could buy, and I was like, "Why would I buy it for five pounds?" I, I uh, no, sorry, Warcraft One. Why would I buy? The, the demo of this for five pounds. I, I want the full. Like, <laughs> yeah, where is it? And this is before the internet. You can't just go and click on something and go, go and buy it. I was like, it doesn't rem- exist anywhere. I remember my first MP3 taking about three hours to download on the internet, and it was Blur, um, oh, Boys and Girls. <laughs> I remember downloading it from some obscure website somewhere, and it was it was like I think it said something like eight thousand bytes. And at the time, I didn't even know what a byte was, and I was like, eight thousand <laughs> bytes. That's huge. I am. Um, I'm downloading the Unreal Tournament and the original Unreal Tournament Jesus. demo. It was 50 meg. It took it took me 12 hours, and it was corrupt at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> so you had the worst dial-up I, connection in the world, it though. It was like yeah, it was. In case I disappear, I um, thanks to Chris's um, comment, just spat most of my drink out on top of my. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, was was that the blur or the download of it? It was it was it was a mixture of the both. Like I was like, I remember being that person. That's that's, that's me there. But just, it, it was it was remarkable. Like how I remember my my dad. Like my dad was a huge online gamer. But um, I remember my dad getting the when Diablo, like uh, the like I started playing online Diablo, mm. and like he was just going like, you can't be on the phone line all night. Mm. I'm like, dad. Who's gonna call at six thirty? I was lucky in that my I was lucky in that my dad spent most of his nights at his girlfriend's house, so I literally had the phone to myself and I I paid the internet bill myself as well. And then I got FreeServe, then I got Screaming.net, and they were all free. And I was like, amazing, just to pay a little subscription price or whatever it was. Just get a second line installed. Job done. Yeah, I did that at one point, and then I think I I was I got five twelve meg, five twelve meg, five (laughs) twelve kilobit, kilobyte, kilobit. More kilobit. 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 God, have I been drinking as well? Jesus. Um, Are you shit? That as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I got that, and I was I was amazed. I could download stuff so quick. It was amazing. Anyway, we're not talking about reminiscing and, and <laughs> the olden days, back when uh, most of our viewers probably weren't even alive. And uh, but the, the next bit of news that I have is um, a bit of, another bit of controversial news that some people like, some people don't, um, some people are into are into this kind of thing. The the order, the new, uh, the order 18, 1886. Is it the I 1886? I love the look of that game. Love the look of the game, but it's five hours long. It's what five hours game? long, and two and a half of those five hours are cutscenes. Surely it's only five hours long if you if you play it a certain way. Surely the whole point of a game is it's a variable length. Well, no, no, it's it's an on rails shooter. That's the point the, of that game. No, it's so a bit more came out for that. The the playthrough. That lasted five hours is a way to do it. There, the studio was saying there's no way, but realistically, people are calling it a ten-hour maximum, which is scary to think for a fifty, sixty-pound game. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay that, and like, I always look at it like Chris. You're you're a value expert, so we can't <laughs> include you on this. But Chris is Scandinavian for value. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Neto Seabock, yes. Other supermarkets are available. <laughs> but like, um, you know, there's got, to, there's certainly got to be that that value per hour of gameplay. And um, I, I've actually played, I played the order at Gamescom, the demo. Um, it's not that good. No, it doesn't it's, sound like it will be. 
it's it's a very right. So the guns and stuff are very niche and they're very quirky and like the the bit that I was getting annoyed with was so the the level that we did was there's a load of guys on this you know a balcony sort of thing and we're peering around corners and effectively the gun I have you have to ignite by firing some kind of ignition stuff and then you flame from it and you would you would cause this stuff and I, like I spent about. 15 minutes playing this demo and I walked out and I, the Sony part was one of the funniest parts of Gamescom because at this point I was really really drunk so I was being brutally honest with them and they, yeah. and they go they go it's going to be game of the year isn't it I went fucking no it's not and like just stormed <laughs> out like and the funniest part was the whole of the Sony thing so I, I played on Far Cry before before it came out and I went this is beautiful but what a stupid zone to give me a grenade launcher and like a little stealth zone like this is stupid <laughs> I played Diablo the majority of the time we were in this, the Sony thing I went this kind of works on a controller yeah it's alright and everything else I was like mm, it's not that great and um, I think it would be a pile of shit mm. is my uh, game over year prediction I like I, the um, I like the, the idea of niche weapons I like the idea of some Victorian guy pulling out a herring cannon <laughs> fire, fire really strong fish at enemies. Jack the Ripper blade gun. <laughs> but as far as uh, as value for money goes, though, like how do you quantify that? So you're getting I, ten I hours would, of gameplay. Depends. I would say ten hours is typical length of a game for me. Yeah, but I I was under I the impression it was five. Game. So is it a load of bollocks then that it's five hours? No. Uh, well, they said no. It's not that it's a load of bollocks. That playthrough lasted five hours, but people like the 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 <coughs> developers are saying that's one way to do it. If you did this, this, and this, it probably be double or triple that. Um, so they haven't, you know, no one's played a playthrough of it afterwards. But if it is two, well, this is this is the thing that, like you said, that's five hours of gameplay. No, that's two and a half hours of gameplay with two and a half hours of unskippable cutscenes. Yeah, unskippable as well. That's another thing as well. Imagine playing it the second time through, going, "Oh, I fancy doing something a bit different." Wanting to skip the cutscenes and having to sit through two and a half there's hours. A lot of games that do that. At least Metal Gear Solid doesn't do that. At least, at least you can you can skip the cutscenes if you want. Yeah, that's its only serving. Shut the, the fuck up! <laughs> you really, really don't like it, do you? You really don't really? like Metal Gear. <laughs> right. Um, uh, la, 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 la. I've got one more bit of news, which is uh, Carmageddon reincarnation gets multiplayer. Mm. Um, I'm not a particularly big Carmageddon fan, but I know a few people who who are who thoroughly enjoyed the original. In fact, I've seen our friend Greg play it and oh. laugh his face off while he's playing yeah, it. But I love the original. I think I think Greg does have problems though, so that probably explains uh, explains that. Any game with an electro bastard ray <laughs> has to be worth playing. I still want to that's play top, that game with the shark ten. gun. At that point, oh, armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. It sounds amazing. It sounds right up my street. But yeah, the fact that it, you know it's now it's put in multiplayer in there, I think is uh, is a good thing. I think that'd be a good I, land I game. It, to play. I, th I think personally, I think games involving cars crashing into one another get very boring very quickly. There's only so many. There's only so much fun you can have with driving a car into another car. Uh, yeah, but... I found. Uh, there's something different yeah, about the Carmageddon games in that they don't give a fuck. Carmageddon wasn't just about crashing into the other person. No, it wasn't. It was, Carmageddon. It was a very yeah. brutal game back in the day. Like It was one of those ones that, you know, I remember playing that when I was, you know, just gone 10 or whatever age I was and, you know, Alex down the road's dad had downloaded it and we're like, oh, we can play it again. Oh my God, this is this is like, this is brutal, sort it's of horrific. thing. You, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, obviously, the 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 boundaries have changed now, but it's it's uh, it was it was fun back in the day. I don't know how much I'd give a shit now. Is the honest <laughs> answer. Fair um, enough. I, I got it from my um, iPad, and my iPhone, um, and it was a it was a decent version of it. But I just didn't play it. I, I think. I really enjoyed the. Uh, I, I the first first time I played it was one of the first PC games I played. I had a demo disc, and it was a Christmas version of the Aztec map. Yeah, and it was great. I remember it. you playing that. Yeah, yeah. The so Christmas there's re reindeer mode. instead of cows, and like people with like bells in the hair and stuff, and you'd run over them. 
Still got a soft spot for the solid granite car. Yeah. <laughs> I, the granite car. Yeah. I haven't played it. I just know that a few people have, you know, are into Carmageddon, so this is why I brought it up. But it sounds, it just, it sounds amazing. You'd pick up the um, the solid granite car bonus, and then basically like, you weighed as much as, you know, a small moon. If you crashed into something, then you did not yield. <laughs> right. You just you just knocked the other thing flying. <laughs> it went straight through the floor, basically. Anything you could. Maybe not the floor. Didn't have that kind of thing then, back in the day. Yeah, well, actually, in games that old, you probably did go through the floor quite a bit. I've got one more thing, actually. You said that last time. I know I did, I know I did, but I've got one more thing. This isn't exactly news, but it was a chat that I was having with someone on Twitter, and I want to know your opinions on it. Um, okay. What do you think about game announcements that are, are out quite... Uh, we've, we've briefly touched on this in this show, but, but game announcements that come out years before the game does, and I'm talking about not just AAA games, because they generally have quite a rigid schedule with AAA games normally there's you know you get an announcement then you then you get beaters and then you get a, a release and yeah. it's all within a small section of time but indie games for example um, there could be an I, indie game that gets announced and then yeah. there's, there's constraints I, I've got very very little patience and quite a short attention span so like uh, the Ultima game uh, that Lou posted the, uh, the Kickstarter link for looks really good release date late 2016 yeah. Fucking 2016. I, I might even be alive then. <laughs> <laughs> That's like. <laughs> I know what you mean. When I saw that, that did put me off as well a bit. Yeah. But it's like. I can. St I know why they're doing it. They want to build up hype. They want to try and get a follow on behind it and maybe get feedback from the community and whatever. But at the end of the day, I just. I, I want to know what I can play tomorrow or tonight yeah. or next yeah. week. Not what I can Problem play, is. you know, when I live in a different country. The problem is now, I mean, I, I remember when Halo was announced years ago as a Mac game, like a, th a third person Mac game, I think it was even meant to be RTS at one point mm. um, and then Microsoft bought it and turned it into a first person shooter and stuff, but I remember the hype being amazing for that game like everyone was wanting this game even just the idea of like you're on the inside of a giant ring in space and stuff was very cool, and it, it seemed to keep rolling Whereas these days, when they release, when they, when you announce a game really early like that, you know that you're basically going to get early access. You're going to get a, a tenth of a game, and then yeah. they're going to run some massive extra crowdfunding thing to kind of get the game to go through. Just like what Star Citizen and Elite are doing. Well, certainly Star Citizen yeah. anyway. I think it detracts away from the game itself because I think it allows if, people if you to get do that really hype, good... and then you get a little bit of a taster. I don't know. It kind of after you've had that taste, there's nothing really compelling yet to kind of get really excited about it. About unless you're the unless you're the kind of person who likes that, who likes to keep up to date with the de development of a game. But that's that that kind of that's kind of a niche thing. You well, get people who it, it dilutes the experience, though, doesn't it? It completely dilutes mm. the experience. It's like you're getting oh. a bit of a game, and you'll get bored of it as it's getting better. It's like you won't even notice yeah. that it's getting better because you've got bored of it already. I mean, going back to the Halo example, can you imagine what what the hype would have been like if we got a player an early access version of it? Wouldn't have been. It would have killed the franchise. What's happened to demos then? Why don't we get demo? What, what, that used to work. You but got yeah, a demo, you got yeah, a taste of it, you got a little, you know, a little bit, and then you then you couldn't wait for the full game to be out. The problem with demos is that they're free, right? And you know, a lot of people should, these should, days. I'll, I'll tell you seeing one thing, actually. I'll, I'll jump something on there, yeah. Yeah. So EA have one thing on lock on that that side of things. Um, so for Xbox One, uh, I think I, you were on the cast when I was talking about it. The e EA Access, right? So you can either pay four ninety nine a month or you can pay twenty quid for the year. So twenty quid for the year doesn't only give me Battlefield Four, Garden Zombies, whatever, um, Peggle Two, FIFA Fourteen, like the old versions, hunt like a lot of free games. It also gives me, before um, anyone else, seven hours of gameplay for a game. So Dragon Age is one of the ones I tried out, um, but Madden does it, like all of them. It's not a demo, it is the game is unlocked to you for this period of time um, as a see, member to that. Um, Nintendo do a similar sort of thing uh, with their demos. So if, if you go on, on, onto the uh, Nintendo store, you can download a game, and it's the full game, but you only get 15 sessions 
or yeah. twelve sessions or ten sessions. Well, St- but Steam do that kind of thing, don't they? With the um, with weekend deals, you know, you can download the mm. full game for a weekend, play it, and then that's it. You can't play it anymore. Um, that, what I'm, I think, what I'm more specifically asking about here is the is the maybe the indie market because AAA companies are very different in that they have the infrastructure, and they have the resources, yeah. and the money and the time to do that. Whereas indie gamers. They don't have the resources to develop the game. Sometimes it's too ambitious for them. Sometimes I'd it, ask, it, why would they? Like, what do you mean? The, some, well, in some of the cases, like there's certain games that, like, you know, I'm quite skeptical. Like, other guys, they're playing whatever games on early access and stuff, and it's like, you know, oh, when's the game going to fully come out? Well, isn't that pretty much the full game? Like, they've already been paid effectively yeah. for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. Why do they have to bother? Like mm. you know, oh no, that that is the problem. Access. That's the problem Kerbal, with early access. That's the inherent Kerbal, problem with it. Kerbal Space Pro- Program is a massive um, example of that. You know, the the community is now supporting that game. There's more mods for the game than there is any kind of official yeah. work on it, because they've been paid. They've made a game which, you know, it's like it's it's exactly what Mike just said there. It's like why we don't need to do any more with this. No. We did have some ideas, but we've been paid. We can do something else. And you know, as a, like an indie developer or anyone who's made a game, you're always thinking about the next game. And if you've been paid and you can do that, then why why would you stick with it, that um, game? Prison Simulator. One yeah, prison, not prison Architect. architect. Uh, prison Architect. We, we came up to them, right? So I don't know that much about the game, but I've heard Leon talk about it for like a year and a half. And we came up to them at EG Express a year ago and I was like cool you know we'd like shake hands and stuff and I was like and they're going well version 1.7.2 uh, we'll have this and I was like how about version release the game <laughs> and it's still not even out like, no it's not and it, the thing is introversion are, are, we've said, again said this a number of times on this, this cast is that introversion are known to either fail at releasing a game or never <laughs> release the finished product never release the finished product I bought Ridiculous. Prison Architects knowing that that was going to be the case thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the, the couple, good few weeks that I sunk into that game and then realised again, it's another one that doesn't really have an end to it. They're right. adding more story elements. They're adding more uh, content to the actual game. But they can—I mean, it's a building game. They can just keep ploughing new assets into yeah. the game, and it'll keep it growing. But they'll never release well, a full that, version. That, that's the difference. We, we've, we've the the problem is for our generation is the internet. Like we have the internet, we can click a button and it's there. Mm-hmm. It's not like it actually has to go to a shop and we have to buy it anymore. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, we we talk about how, you know, I got really upset about Destiny's expansion. Expansion, that's not an expansion. You talk about you know the old Command and Conquers, the War, War, Warcrafts, the you know these things. That was another game. It wasn't like an add-on or you know a slight change to stuff it was a full game in its own right but it wasn't quite big enough for them to warrant calling it a game these days you can pretty much release you know uh, however many hours of extra content and then market it like 30 quid and it's like well Mm. hold on a second why why should i pay that for it and I, i mean i'm one of the biggest mugs in the world like when like sales stuff, I always miss the sales because I'm one of the people that buys in at the hype. I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's play it when it comes. Like, I want to, I want, I want to get in ground level and ride this wave. And I, I did used to do that. Time. I did used to do that, but now I'm, I'm very much. A, I've got so many games on my back burner that I might as well wait. You know, yeah. unless there's something well, I really, really want, really, really want. It's a shame <laughs> because there's so many, you know, titles that realistically these days. You know, we we talk about these multi-million-dollar franchises and stuff, and we talk about you know even some you know we class them as indie, but they're actually making quite a hefty amount of money. Doesn't the and, amount of money doesn't make much difference? The indie indie tag is you, officially an indie tag means that they are independently published. They don't use a publisher, or the publisher that they do use has left them with total control. That's what well, indie yeah. means. But Some people I always say, look I'm... at an indie that you know realistically most most smaller companies get incorporated is mm. the way I'd look at it. Well, not I, all of them, but a lot of the the game companies they kind of they either they 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 become more because of you know they get a lot of money thrown at them. 
a lot of the time. Well, yeah, that, the, the more money you've got, the more resources you can you can have. And making a game is no mean feat. It's it's not, if that's even a phrase. But, you know what I mean? It's it, it, it's not <laughs> easy to make a game. The, if you want no. to do anything even remotely ambitious, you need all kinds of skills to do it. You know, if you if you it's 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 inherent it has to happen that way and this you can still be um, i mean teen 17 for god for god's sake they're classed as an indie publisher an indie um development studio still because they yeah. are independently published but you've also got people like myself who hasn't published anything yet but there's also other people like um mike bithel he's recently uh, when he was doing an interview for uh, official PlayStation magazine. He's written, they've written in there that he does not consider himself indie anymore because he's not on his own. That's his definition of indie because he's not doing Ooh. it a game. Is just... Mike Bithell a uh, bread guy? No, no, that's um, that's Jonathan Blow. Um, Mike right. Bithell is the Thomas was alone guy, and he's doing a new game Twice. called Volume. Um, Volumes like a, a retelling of the um, Robin Hood story, uh, but in kind of like a cyberpunk. He doesn't call it cyberpunk, but it's kind of like a futuristic, low poly cyberpunk kind of uh, world. Mm. It's, it's, it looks quite interesting. I'm not. I'm not sure it, it's my cup of tea, but it's actually. Yeah, that looks a bit like Tron. It's actually influenced by all of the games that I like, uh, Metal Gear Solids and that kind of thing. You know, that kind of stealth. But I'm not sure if I like the the, the idea of it. But anyway, it is what it is. We could talk all night, and we're not going to overrun too far. So um, unless anyone else has anything else to to go on about. We shall close I, the show. I wanted to just on um, where one last thing that I I wanted to ask you guys on was um so you're talking about the that side of things. How do you feel about um studios that give a deadline and then exceed that deadline, like change it and change it and change it? I mean, you probably see it more. Well, not just no no. Well, I mean, for example, for me recently, so have you ever any of you guys um ever played Constructor before? Uh, yes, I think that rings. That does ring bells. Oh, it's so. like a, a real-time strategy where you have to make blocks of flats and stuff like that. And oh no, then sorry. It's, effectively, it's 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 probably one of the my favourite games I've ever played. That you you have to make levels of tenants to create a, um, an empire of stuff, and effectively, your low-level tenants are either real scum of the earth that have sex lots, so they pump out lots of more tenants for you and then the higher you get it's 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 sort of your any rts but like in in that kind of genre but they've been saying hd remake was coming end of the year and then it was mid uh, well it's coming february and then like there's no announcement for it but i just look at a thing and then it goes oh well it's this date now and like a lot of um you know the the classic example is grand theft auto 5 of the PC, mm. when the f is, is it, it's not out yet. Like I was, I was shocked. It's apparently coming out in March, game. though, isn't it? At the moment, yeah. Apparently, uh, 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 yeah. With the heists that were meant to come out three months after it originally came out, or well, what a year and three, four months ago. I can answer this question in in two different ways. For indie studios, small indie studios, I can forgive them as long as they need to delay. Because I know how hard it is to, for, them, for them to do it. For AAA studios, the only reason that they can delay these things, they've got plenty of money behind them. The only reason that they can delay that they, they do delay these things is bureauc bureaucracy and politics that occurs higher up the chain. Oh, we've just lost someone just in time, um, and that there, I, I I can't forgive AAA companies for doing that. And this is why I, this is why I'm. I suppose miffed at lots of the AAA things, and this is why I don't pay full price for games anymore. You know, we've got to. Do you think it's? Do you think it's? Because um, because we have the, we've had this argument on our show, and I I don't think it's acceptable, no matter what it is. That you know, once you set a, a, a date in stone, that should be the date. But they're saying, you know, well look, I'd rather wait six months and it'd be a better product. I, I'm and with I them. Think, I'm with you there. But I I, I think at the same time. You know, we look at certain things. So the the be let's go back to the Grand Theft Auto Five example. Yeah, heists were meant to come out a couple of when multiplayer came out, which was a couple of months after GTA Five originally launched, which was uh, let's say 
well, it came out not October of last year, October 2013, that game came out. And we still don't have heists because apparently they can't quite do it. <laughs> Well, how I, the um, fuck of the how the fuck is it I was, not possible? I had a, a a guy from the um 3D art team uh, for GTA 5 working on my game very very briefly. Uh, he, mm. he decided to leave to leave Rockstar for for num- numerous reasons I won't go into. But he, uh, he 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 told me basically how things work there and it and it's it's essentially you are a all of the employees are numbers at the end of the day that they're just yeah. there to do a job that, that it's a sweatshop yeah. to an extent you know i'm not saying there's no creativity but the only people that get listened to are the people who are high up in these companies who have either been there for a while or they've earned the stripes and it's really difficult to advance for even if you're very 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 good at what you do you can't really advance and you, you've got no real way of getting there so it is all it's all made, all the decisions are made by people who don't really understand how much effort goes yeah. into a game and and they don't care about how much effort goes into a game they care about the figures at the end of it and yeah this is it i i i, I can't forgive it i can't forgive that with triple a's at all uh, and, and i mean but then again i don't follow triple a games that often anymore it's it's very occasional i'll be like that really appeals to me and i'll go for it you know but apart from that i'm 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 out i'm out <laughs> What do you guys think? I don't know what happened now. I missed half the conversation. Um, we, uh, Mike was just asking, um, what do you think about games that have delayed release dates? That ran over. I think as long as, um, as long as there's a good reason it doesn't add any more cost to the customer and they still get a quality product at the end of it, I don't see the issue. Um, indie, well, you think- could probably forgive a bit more than you can AAAs, yeah. but ultimately, would you rather that Grand Theft Auto came out in March and it worked, or would you rather Grand Theft Auto came out in January and it was fucked? I'm, I'd well, rather it was March and it worked, definitely. Yeah. Thing is though, thing is though, and I think, I think this is probably what, part of what Mike's getting at here is that, um, they might come out in March and still be fucked. It might do, but <laughs> and that's actually you don't know that very until often it the case. It's like they, they don't, they can't seem to get it to work, and so they delay it, and they say, "Oh, we're going to get it to work," and then. It's like, oh, we just can't do it. And it's like, why even say it in the first place? You're you're a huge company that knows exactly what to do when you've got a massive programming team, massive like, art team, and you're saying you can't do it? Like, why did you even yeah. hype it's, it up in the first place? It's the bureaucracy and the politics. That's what it is. There's no, no other There's no other excuse for I mean, it. I mean, it's one of these things where they set out with a goal and say, right, this is what we'd like to do, this is what we want to deliver. But ultimately, they might not be able to achieve that, and I mean, might not be able to achieve it with the uh, to the level that they want. And yes, they've got shitloads of money and they've got loads of talent and programmers. Doesn't mean they can do everything. They shouldn't shouldn't announce that they're going <coughs> to do something. What other industry they're not... can you get away with doing that, though? Um, it happens in every industry. Yeah, it I does happen in the art, a lot. Of industry, and no. that happens all the time. I, wor- I work in the I work in many different industries as a programmer, and yeah. every single pro every single project that I work on is delayed. How every many times project. have you seen a concept car? And then when you actually see the production car, it's fuck all like it. Yeah, but a concept car, I, I'd say that's a little bit different. The, the, the way I'd look at it, the, well, the, the thing that annoys me, yeah, is that... Right, so if we... Let's ignore indie, because indie is a bit of a different kettle fish. of fish. It's, 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 uh, it, you can't really judge you know, a four-man team on what it is. But let's look at these huge companies that... Around the time of when Xbox and Sony release huge, well, their new version of a console, they are driving sales because of certain things going to come out mm. and people specifically funding a lot of money. Like myself, if I could know what happened over the year of when I got my Xbox One and my PS4, fuck it, I'll wait a year. Mm. Like, in all honesty, I like, did. I'm not going to. Well, a lot of people did, but a lot of people bought into certain things so elder scrolls online is a really classic example of what i i always bring up right so they finally made an announcement that sometime in june that's going to come out for a console that was meant to come out when the consoles were released how is that even physically possible like 18 months over like that's something to you know elder scrolls online is coming go and buy an xbox one it's 18 months later. So like, this is that's, where that's not... 
this is where consumers need to stop buying these things and stop pre-ordering and stop getting early access games and Real. stop buying yeah, consoles that, Chris, early. You say that, Chris, though, but the, thing, the problem is that these companies are putting really big marketing bud budgets and putting a lot of PR and and pressure on gamers who are expecting this stuff, who've always expected this stuff, and mm. usually it's been delivered. And now I don't think you can blame happened. the companies because ultimately their goal is to make money. Mm -hmm. And if they can spin a few white lies or even black lies, whatever you want to call them, and still make money and not get any bad press for that, they're going to keep doing it. Yep. They're not going to stop doing it until people PC, stop pre-ordering like, games. This, this is the thing, right? It's the same as Grand Theft Auto. It's out on a, it's out on a console. It's not out on PC, or it's out on PC and it's not out on a console. It doesn't take that long. Like if they really knew what they were doing, like look, the the, the, the technicalities of releasing a game on PC are considerably different from consoles because you are you you know why I'm not going to go into uh, that. One hundred percent on that side, but like look, if we take Grand Theft Auto as one and Elder Scrolls Online as another, Elder Scrolls Online has failed on PC already and disappeared, and they've suddenly <laughs> gone, oh well, let's take the subscription off. Oh, people actually wanted that on console. Let's try and fix that and bring that back in. Because and pe console gamers aren't usually plumbed into the PC market, so they don't really know what goes on. The amount of time I speak to a console gamer that doesn't have any clue about the the the, the amount of games that we have available to us and the amount Ooh. of different types of games and library and the fact that we've got loads of different platforms, they don't they don't they, they live in their own little world. They don't live in. That's true. That, I mean, so. if you compare Steam to Xbox Arcade or whatever you want to yeah. do, it's a completely diff mm. like they're completely different markets at the same time. But it's just to me, it's inexcusable that you know the the thing that really annoyed like Elder Scrolls Online is one that really annoys me. That they said the original thing was we'll delay it till March, and then they shut the fuck up, didn't say anything. This is all that happened. March came. There's no news. They didn't. They didn't give an update. They just went. June came. Nothing. We're in February of the year past, and like halfway through, and end of January, they're like, "Oh, by the way, console gamers, rejoice! Elder Scrolls Online is coming, and it's going to be subscription free, and all this kind of stuff in June." And it's, you know, it's, there's no update system. It's, it's not. Grand Theft Auto. I'll throw that out there because that's the that's the. That's the biggest title on the planet, realistically. If we if we look in some ways, and like they, uh, you know, they know when it hits PC, it's going to do next things again because the, you know they. I bought it on Xbox 360 and then bought it on PS4. I played it for 45 minutes on PS4 and then never played it again. They're fucking clever. They know exactly <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because they got double out of me for the exact same game. Like, yeah, they did some stuff, but. It's the 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 level of how we let them get away with it. That's exactly know? my point. That my point is that they it is us as consumers that need to stop doing these things. We need to stop pre-ordering. We need to stop buying all uh, any any of these games that we disagree with. If we're going to sit and whinge about them, stop do it. Stop doing it. Otherwise, they're just going to keep making money and they're just going to keep doing the same thing over yeah. and over. Well, I'm going to have to stop us there, Mike. Yeah. Because we have run over a little bit and uh, we all need to get a bed and get our beauty sleep, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> right, so if you, you want to really do You really need that. I do, I do. Thank you, you <laughs> bastard. Um, uh, <laughs> let, let you do your pimpage, Mike. Tell it again. Tell the people that are, are viewing about your show and everything else to do with you. Well, if you want to <laughs> um, check out our Twitter, it's at Gover, yeah, G over, yeah. Um, main part is our website, www.gameoveryear.net. Um, all the YouTube links and stuff. So we do a weekly podcast um, that will be up on there as well. On to Thursdays, honest, I believe. Then, yeah, uh, it comes out Thursdays usually. It, it's mixing. Sometimes it's Wednesday, sometimes it's Thursdays. However, there is soon to be a big change up. <sighs> Dropping bombshells. Um, we're probably going to go more of a format like yours due to space constrictions and so on. So... We don't know what's happening in the future. We also have a couple of videos that we've been trying to edit for quite a long time coming out soon that are more of our creative side than our rambling drunk talking about game side. So we will see them. Uh, please check those out. Um, but uh, yeah, check out the website, gameovier.net. Um, check out Twitter, 
Facebook, it's all the usual stuff. If you put in game over, yeah, you'll either get the random American people that did some stuff three, four years ago, and they're not quite as beautiful as me, or you'll get my face on there. So check it out. I did the same with a with a band. I had a band uh, years ago, and I named it something that some American band was called years and years and years back. They, they, they still had the websites up, <laughs> but you know my, we came on the top, luckily, of all search engines. Anyway, right. So yes, um, I shall do our pimpage, and then we'll we'll close the show. Thank you everyone for yep. watching. We've had a nice little uh, nice little crowd in there today. Uh, if you are interested in us, our podcast, or anything else to do with it, you can find us on Facebook forward slash Residence Arcade, Twitter forward slash Residence Arcade, or at Residence Arcade, and uh, YouTube forward slash Residence Arcade, and we're on Google. Plus, whatever thing no one cares about. <laughs> the only people the one, on no one, no yeah. one cares about. We are live every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. UK time uh, with this show, which is our talk show. We are also now streaming a Monday show at 7.30. We didn't do one this week because everybody was ill no. or dead or not around, uh, apart from me and Steve, i.e. the important two. And... Um, but we at the moment we're playing Metal Gear Solid. We're nearly. We've got one show left from the end of Metal Gear Solid Three, as we did last week, and then we're going to go on with Metal Gear Metal Gear Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Four, which I'm hoping the guys will like a little bit more because it is a little bit more professional. I think more. more You've said this about every presented. Metal Gear Solid. I, game I like it. It's my favourite. He is the industry selling you from the first one. <laughs> oh, you're going to love this one. I am. Yeah. Hideo <laughs> Kojima's. I'm a fan boy. Got this. Look, I'm not a fanboy for anything else. This is this is what I this is this is my fandom. Um, so yeah, you can check that out on Mondays. We do that at 7:30 p.m. as well, and that goes on for a few hours. All our videos are uploaded to YouTube, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. See you later. Cheers. Bye-bye.